a cool day in Wichita, and we've got softball for you. Game three of this conference opening series for the Wichita State Shockers and the Memphis Tigers. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Steve Strain along with Jamie Hall as we've got the rubber match of this three-game series. Wichita State won yesterday by the score of 11-1. to one. Two totally different games because it was all about pitching on Friday in a game that Memphis won by the score of 3-2. to two. So which of these two teams... With a light breeze blowing today at Wilkins Stadium, we'll come away winning two of the three. Jamie, welcome in. And uh, we saw, again, a pitching-oriented game on Friday. Yesterday, the Shockers pounded out 11 runs on 11 hits. They won via the mercy rule. But I think most people would expect that today's game, probably with the two aces back in the circle, will most likely take the form of the game, a really good game we saw here on Friday night. Absolutely. If both teams can turn it on the way they did on Friday on the mound, we're definitely Definitely going to see a lot smaller scoring margin, I think, today than we did yesterday. And that's always the way in game two. You know, you got some uh, your backup pitcher, your second string pitcher coming in. And I know Memphis probably would have wanted to see a little bit better turnout um, from their staff yesterday. It brought in three different arms. And uh, we're going to see if we can maybe have just the Bailey Lang and the uh, Molly Smith kind of show today. There's Bailey Lang and a look at her numbers. Nine and seven on the season. Earned her an average at 2.66. She lasted four innings on Friday night and gave up seven hits, two earned runs. She wasn't terrible by any stretch. Bailey Klitsky came on to finish the final three in relief and she pitched very well and actually was one costly error that helped Memphis take the three to two lead in the fifth inning that ended up being the deciding play in the game. So we'll see if Bailey can have better success today and the Shockers can be the team of these two that takes two out of three to open conference play this weekend. So here we go. Lang is set. Kyler Trost, Claire Clad is in. First pitch is in at 11.16 Central Time. It's one ball and no strikes to Trost, Claire Clad. Temperature, it's a bit chilly today in the low 40s. A light breeze at about 13 miles an hour out of the south, but again, not much of a breeze today, but it is chilly at Wilkins Stadium as this one is sliced foul outside the dugout at third base. A late start, in fact, because of weather. We had some rain early this morning, and so the Shocker team and grounds crew had to take some time to get the field ready, and it took a while to get that tarp off as well. Were you out there helping, Jamie? I wasn't out there, but I did hear it was quite strenuous. <laughs> there was a lot more uh, moisture than I think they were expecting uh, from last night that was left over, and the team got a little bit of an extra warm-up today by having to push that out into the outfield. One ball and two strikes. The count to Tross Claire Clad, a ter terrific hitter for Memphis at 447 on the season, coming into play today, and she takes here, and the count's now even at two and two. Just one hit yesterday for Tross Claire Clatt. She went three for four on Friday night. Foul back out of play, still two and two. Memphis's team batting average, 337. So it's dipped down some from when this series started on Friday. When they entered play, it was one of the top 10 hitting teams average-wise in the nation. Bounced foul over toward first. Of course, they also, as we've touched on during this series, are one of only three Division I programs that are in the top 10 in both batting average and team ERA. So they are in some rare company in those two departments, and we've seen some of both this series. They've strung together nine hits on Friday night and got the really good pitching both days. The count's full here to Tross Claire Clatt. Three balls and two strikes. We talked about the offensive outing from Wichita State yesterday in the 11 to 1 win, but really got to do a hats off to Caitlin Bingham and Bailey Klitsky for Wichita State coming together, only allowing two hits for that very strong offense of Memphis. So Wichita State just was firing on all cylinders yesterday. A free pass to Tross Claire Clatt. She'll go down to first base. So the leadoff batter aboard for the Tigers via the walk, and that'll bring up Bailey Smith. That's not what you want to do to this Memphis team. As good as they are at hitting the softball, Jamie, give them free opportunities like they've got right here. 
Smith steps in, batting 455. She's going to bunt. This is a pop-up, and it's going to be caught at first by Riley Buck. So that's a big first out as Smith unable to put that one down on the ground, and Buck makes the catch. Here it is again, and you want to get on top of that, not underneath it, and that goes as a pop off first. Yeah, you can see how Smith's bat just was kind of at the wrong angle, and with a pitch up in the zone from Bailey Lang, that's pretty much the only place that ball's going to go if you keep the, the bat tilted the way that it was for that at bat with Smith. So you really probably wanted to watch that ball go by. It wasn't a squeeze bunt by any means, so she had a few more pitches to play with and definitely went in the favor of Bailey Lang and the Shockers. Addison Maxwell in now takes a strike, nothing in one. Upstairs, one and one. Riley Buck at first base making that play. Kaylee Hecker at second. Lori Derrico, the shortstop. McKenzie right over at third. The outfield from left to right. Morgan Palmer gets the start today in left. Bailey Nickerson in center. Asia Weber is over in right field. There's a strike delivered to Maxwell to even things up. One ball and one strike. Still no Paige Llewellyn back in right field. She is in the lineup again this entire series. She's been the designated player but has not played in right field at all. One and two, this one misses away. Things are even now, two balls and two strikes. 94 and two thirds innings this season for Bailey Lang. She's given up 84 hits, 36 earned runs, walked 31 and struck out 106. Opponents batting 230 against her as this one is chopped foul over toward the Shocker dugout. Counts even, two balls and two strikes. Bailey was not overpowering in her solid four innings the other night with just the two strikeouts as this one is chopped foul, but still very effective. Yeah, Bailey Lang's one of the most athletic players on this Shocker team. As a pitcher, um, she's in there today, considered the ace really for this Shocker lineup right now. And then going in and being a right fielder, um, a great hitter, a great base runner. I mean, she really can do it all. So when you've got a pitcher out there that has some great athleticism, you expect a lot from her game by game. Little flare out to Derek O at short. She's going to run in and make the catch. And after the leadoff walk, a good job by Lang to bounce back. She's gotten a pop couple of pop outs on the infield, and now there's two away. It's already different than what we saw from the Memphis lineup yesterday as we see this pop fly again. Yesterday off of Bingham and Klitsky, we saw a lot of ground ball out. So, um, so far today, it looks like with laying on the mound, they're gonna see a little bit more up in the zone and potentially more pop-up outs, which either way as a pitcher is productive. Ashley Threat, the cleanup hitter for Memphis. Two for seven in the series, 355 her batting average. She is the leader on this team with five home runs. Tied with Bailey Lee as the strike is delivered. And it's nothing in two, so a nice job here by Lang after the leadoff walk to get a pop out to first, a pop out to short, now ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes here. And the 0-2 is sent outside. Bailey, Friday night, got it in a bit of a jam in the first inning as well, and she was able to work her way out of it as there were runners at the corners stranded for Memphis. They also had him at second and third on Friday night in the second inning, and she escaped unscathed. There goes the runner, throw down to second. It's a little bit high and wide in a stolen base for Tross Claire Clapp. That is her eighth stolen base of the season in 11 tries, and there you can see even if the throw was on the money, it might have been tough to get her sliding in in time. Sounds like she had a really good lead off, really good start to that run down to second base, that's really where it counts as a base runner. If you get a nice little start, you start right on time, you have a great chance, especially with the ball out of the zone of being there safe and, you know, with threat up to the plate, this is the best situation for Memphis in this inning to have someone in scoring position with her power. Counts even at two and two and a swing and a miss and down she goes. So a good job by Lang after the leadoff walk to battle back and retire the side in order from there. After half an inning, Memphis nothing, Wichita State coming up.
Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Memphis held in check in the top of the first inning and Wichita State will now get their first look at the Tiger ace Molly Smith. On a cool afternoon, well, still morning, actually, to be exact, in Wichita as we've got game three of this series. There's a look at Molly Smith, who went the distance on Friday night, got the win, her 13th win of the season against just three losses. She gave up two earned runs, walked two, struck out four, scattered four hits as well. Of course, two of the four hits she gave up Friday night were solo homers. Bailey Nickerson and Lori Derrico had the two homers for Wichita State, but outside of those two bad pitches, she just gave up two hits the rest of the night. And one thing we saw from her, Jamie, is Mackenzie Wright gets set to step in, is a really good job of mixing up her pitches. Absolutely, she stayed ahead of the shocker lineup, was able to really throw the pitches she wanted out of the zone, came in a lot to the righties, went out a lot to the lefties, and so you can see her starting there with a little bit of an inside start with the Mackenzie Wright. So the shockers are ready for anything. You know, you, when you see Molly Smith come in there today, you remember what you saw from Friday and try to readjust and picture yourself doing well against this great pitcher. Opponents hitting just 187 against her. That's gonna help the average for opponents as Mackenzie Wright slaps one to the fence in left field. She's gonna slide into second with a leadoff double and a good start for Wichita State as Mackenzie all over that one, driving it down the line and left for a double. She really jumps on this one and turns on it as well. And you can see it. Yeah, it's great placement from your leadoff hitter. You know, a lot of times your leadoff is gonna do whatever they need. Scrappy, you know, get a walk, get a ground ball, do whatever you gotta do to get on base. And that's an awesome start for this Wichita State offense. And definitely something that this uh, coaching staff for Wichita State likes to see early in the game. Fifth double of the season for Mackenzie Wright. 38th two-bagger for Wichita State as a team this year. And here is Bailey Nickerson. First pitch swinging and already it seems as if the Shockers are going after Molly Smith a little bit more aggressively early in the count. The home run Bailey had Friday night was just a bomb to straightaway center field. Everybody in the yard knew that was gone from the time it left her back. Nothing in one, she's showing bunt here and that one stays upstairs, one and one. Nickerson's got the average now up to 288. And as we talked about yesterday, that top part of the Shocker lineup appears to start to really warming up now. Mackenzie Wright swinging it better the last couple of weeks. Nickerson's got the average up to 288. Showing bunt again, and she pops this one up, but it's not caught, and everybody's gonna be safe. Well, Smith came out of the circle there, reacted well, but that was well-placed, and she had to reach down and couldn't quite come up with it. And it's runners at the corners for Wichita State, nobody else. And here's another look at it. Now you can see this one go up into the air, and as a pitcher, Molly Smith's doing whatever she can to try and catch it in the air, and unfortunately it does hit the ground before she can get to it, and with, you know, her legs just running toward the, toward home plate, it looks like they just kind of gave out there toward the end of the play, and really worked out in Bailey Nickerson's favor now that she's safe at first. So Wichita State scattered four hits offensively against Smith Friday. They've already gotten two, two batters into the game. How about that? Hopefully and for the Shockers, a sign of things to come. And in a much different fashion, too. You know, yes. you see the long balls that were coming from game one against Smith and now seeing, you know, both a double and a, and a bunt hit. So, I mean, you're looking at two very different ways of starting a game against Molly Smith for Memphis. Now here's the red hot hitting Derrico. Lori takes away. Lori's looking for the hat trick in this series. She's had a homer in each of the first two games. Of course, yesterday's was a walk-off homer at 
lifted Wichita to a mercy rule victory, 11 to one, a three run shot in the bottom of the fifth inning. It was her fifth home run of the season. Takes for a strike, one and one. So two of Lori's five home runs have come in this series. And don't forget a couple of weekends ago when the Western Illinois Missouri State doubleheader, Derrico had a home run. So three of her five this season have come in the last two weeks. And actually she had one in Nebraska as well. She had a grand slam. So that's four out of her five in the last two weeks. Yeah, they always say, you know, when you're feeling good, you're feeling good as a hitter. And so I think Derrico, if there's any time to feel good, it's right going into the conference start. And like you said, Steve, two home runs within the last two games of the first games of the conference. That's very impressive and something you absolutely want to see out of your three holes getting hot right now during this part of the season. Her slugging percentage is now tops on the team at 609 with the 345 batting average. She's going to take this one about chin high. And the count's even two balls and two strikes. Yeah, with yesterday's heroics, she has passed Paige Llewellyn now in slugging percentage. Lori at 609. Llewellyn is at 603. Her five home runs, most on the team. She's one run batted in behind Llewellyn for tops on the team. This will not be one as it's a 5-3 ground out over to Aaron Parker at third, one away. So here comes Paige Llewellyn. Lori didn't get a real good piece of that one right there. It does get the runner over to second base Nickerson. So two in scoring position now for the dangerous Llewellyn who's in at 365 on the year. Outer edge for a strike, nothing in one. Llewellyn's also hot. The month of March, she's got a 409 batting average, 447 on base percentage, a 659 slugging percentage. She is absolutely on fire in the last 12 games that she's played. High and tight there, one and one. This is the 22nd appearance of the season for Molly Smith, and all but two have been starts. She's got 12 complete games, Jamie, in 18 starts this season. She is accustomed to going the distance as she did on Friday night. That one sailed down nicely into the zone, Jamie. That one started up above the letters, but she took something off and that one sunk right in there. Yeah, that's a really tough pitch as a hitter when you've got someone like Smith who's throwing the ball hard and in and then can go out on the outside corner with something a little slower. That was absolutely a great job and by Hadley too as the catcher to bring it back into the zone to get the call. The one, two to Llewellyn outside. Things are even now two and two. 119 innings pitched for Molly Smith coming into the game. She's given up 18 earned runs, 31 walks, 130 strikeouts. And as I mentioned earlier, opponents batting just a buck 87 against her. And here's the 2-2. Foul back to the screen. And the count holds. Christy Bredbenner coaching at third base for Wichita State. Ryan Stefankiewicz over at first. One of these two teams will be two and one. Christy Bredbenner hoping it's hers in conference play after today. Shocker 17 and 11 overall. Memphis 22 and eight on the year. Upstairs and she went after it anyway and down she goes and a big strikeout against Llewellyn for the second out of the inning. So both pitchers had some early difficulties to start the first batter or two of the first inning. But Bailey Lang was able to retire the side one, two, three after a leadoff walk. Here, it's gone double single for Wichita State, but Molly Smith has gotten a ground out and a strikeout. Now she'll try to retire Riley Buck and leave the first inning unscathed. The first pitch to Buck. Inside edge for a strike, nothing at one. Oh, we've gotten a big burst of sunlight that just occurred. Some of the clouds moved out of the way and it's gotten pretty bright here all of a sudden. Looking more like the afternoon instead of the morning. Yeah. All of a sudden here. 
I'm sure it's feeling that way too as we're kind of in the comfort of an press box, but I'm sure the, uh, the girls out in the outfield and the infield are feeling that. Foul tipped back to the screen and now Bucks got her back to the wall, nothing in two. Well, we won't see the shadows affecting the players on the right side of the field like we normally do for those evening starts as well. Game started at just after 11.15 and will be done probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.30 or 2. Up high for a ball, one ball and two strikes. Riley at 325 on the year, a homer 13 runs batted in against Molly Smith on Friday night. She was 0 for 2. Smith set and delivers. Swung on and missed strike three and down she goes. Down go the Shockers who had a double and a single and go in order after that. We've played one, we're scoreless. Well, both pitchers bent in the first half, but they did not break. Bailey Lane gave up a leadoff walk to Kyler Troth, Claire Klatt in the first inning, but retired the side in order after that. Molly Smith gave up a couple of base hits to Wichita State in the bottom of the first inning and then retired the side in order after that. So we start the second inning in a scoreless game. Delaney Smith will step in for Memphis, and she showed butt right there, but... Ends up taking a strike, nothing in one. Smith, Brooke Lee, and Reagan Hadley, five, six, and seven for the Tigers. There you see the batting average up and down. Big numbers batting average wise for this Memphis team. Smith at 383. Fouls one back to the backstop and quickly it's advantage Bailey Lang, nothing in two. This Memphis team as we discussed yesterday, not just hits well for average, but they hit well for power as well. They they can do it all, Jamie. There's a pitch for a ball, one and two. 337, the team batting average. Their 477 slugging percentage is 45 percentage points higher than Wichita State's as well. This one, a little chopper up the third baseline, and that's gonna be a base hit for Smith. Didn't get a real good piece of it, but it worked, and she's on at first base. Mackenzie Wright charged in, but had no play at first. This is a tough play for an infield, and that's an awesome job from Smith. As a slap hitter, you want to put that ball straight into the ground, have it die right in front of home plate, and that's exactly what she did. And for Delaney, being someone who's 20 for 21 in stolen base attempts, she's absolutely fast and can get down the line in pretty good speed. Yeah, we'll have to watch Madison Perrigan now. And now she attacks this situation with a very good base dealer at the plate. And Brooke Lee, another good contact hitter up there at 303 on the year. One ball and no strikes to her. Lee has been quiet in this series, 0 for 5. As she takes down low, 2 and 0. Because Lee's been struggling a little bit, I would be surprised if she didn't bunt here. Just to get your speed with Smith over to second base. Fouled over to the right side, two and one. 
Nobody in this Memphis batting average hitting below 276. Kendall Lee, the number eight hitter, is at 276. They've only got two players, Aaron Parker being the other out of the nine spot, who are hitting less than 300. There's a bunt foul, and now there are two strikes. So that might be it for bunting opportunities for Memphis. We'll see. Natalie Poole is the seventh-year coach for Memphis. She's at third base. Andy Lott is her seventh-year assistant over at first. There's a look at Coach Poole right now. Pitch comes in high. Counts now full at three and two. Big pitch right here for Lang with a full count. And strike three is called and down goes Lee who thought that was ball four. But that one had something taken off of it in the final few feet, Jamie, and it sailed right down and in the zone. Look at this. Yeah, that's that's an awesome pitch. I mean, that's hard to say that, I, you know, as a, as a hitter, it's hard to say that you would want to swing at something like that. But when you've got two strikes, it's close enough. And honestly, it probably buckled her up enough because Lang took enough off of it, had it land right into the strike zone. It was a great pitch. Reagan Hadley takes a strike, nothing at one. So two strikeouts in the game for Bailey Lang. And they've come in the last three batters. She struck out Ashley Threat to end the first inning. And then two batters later into the second, Brooke Lee, a strikeout victim there. This one sails way up high. Perrigan snares it. One ball and one strike to Hadley. Hadley at 321 on the season, coming into play today. There goes the runner. The throw down to second is not in time. There's another stolen base for Delaney Smith. That's now 21 in 22 tries. And a runner in scoring position for Memphis. Perrigan had to throw that one from her knees. She just didn't have time to get up out of her crouch because of a great jump by Smith again. Yeah, with that stolen base, that just kind of goes back to Lee's at bat, where if she would have put a bunt down and gotten out at first, it would have been the same situation that Memphis finds themselves in now. So, you know, being at second base now is absolutely an opportunity for them to have runners in scoring position and maybe make something happen this inning. So I mentioned Memphis can hit for average, they can hit for power. Oh yeah, they can steal too. That is their 56th stolen base of the season. Ground ball toward Derrico at short. She'll move to her left, throw to first in time. Down to third goes Delaney Smith, but the putout goes 6-3 for out number two. Here it is again, and you can see Lori ranging to her left well, and there you go. The 56 stolen bases, to put that into perspective, Jamie, nearly three times as many as the Shockers have. Wichita State with 21 stolen bases. There's a strike delivered to Kendall Lee, nothing in one. So a combination of hitting for average, hitting for power, stealing in bases as well. This Memphis team, they've, they've got a little bit of everything. And this is definitely a team that you would expect to see at or near the top of this loaded American Athletic Conference come the end of the season. Yeah, you know, you've definitely seen a lot of hustle too. You know, we saw Hadley in that last at bat actually sliding into first base, which, you know, as a catcher so far, she's been really impressive to do her best with framing and, and making some great attempts at foul balls. So you see a lot of hustle on top of it, which is something that's tough to teach. So that's great that that comes along with all of the other accolades they've earned so far this year. Nothing in two, and I think we just had catcher's interference right there as that one looked like it was fouled back to the screen, but she may have gotten a piece of Madison Perrigan's glove. And down to first base goes Kendall Lee. Here it is again, let's see. Yeah, for sure. You can see the glove right there pop off of Madison and hopefully she's all right. So that puts a runner on over at first. And Natalie Poole is asking something to the umpires, and now we're ready to go. 
So first and third now, two away after catcher's interference sends Kendall Lee to first base. And Aaron Parker will step up now. Well, if you're Bailey Lang, Jamie, this is where you just want to rear back and throw strikes. If you want to say you get any kind of break batting average wise for facing this Memphis lineup, this is where you do it out of the eight and nine spots. You don't want to deal with Tross Claire Clad and her 447 average next with runners at the corners. There's a strike that counts even one and one. You would much rather see Tross Claire Clatt leading off the third inning than with ducks on the pond here. Half-hearted swing there, one and two. First three games in the American Athletic Conference for the Wichita State Shockers in softball. Shockers will be in Stillwater Tuesday night. They'll take on Oklahoma State non-conference as this one is sliced and out of play. Next weekend, the Shockers will be in Connecticut to take on UConn. That'll be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series, by the way, because a week from today, it's Easter Sunday. Down low for a ball, two and two. Trying to imagine Connecticut this time of year. That's what I'm wondering is what the weather might look like. Might actually be pretty similar to today, maybe somewhere in the 40s, hopefully on a warmer day in March in Connecticut. I can only imagine it might be a little chilly that weekend. Down low, the count's full. Well, I've been there twice in the last month and a half or so. And uh, cold, dreary, drizzly, any of those would, would apply. Probably not much different now, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Counts full here. And the pitch down and in, and she walked the number nine batter in the lineup. And Christy Breadbenner is biting her upper lip as she heads down to the circle right now. She's not too happy about that. They are loaded now for Kyler Tross Claire Clatt. And you can see the animated Coach Breadbenner right there. Yeah, this has been a tough inning for Wichita State so far. You know, you saw just kind of that little um, ground ball to McKenzie Wright to start off with Smith, which is just a tough play in general. But then getting the stolen base, having a catcher's interference, there's been a lot of kind of beating yourself a little bit in, in terms of this inning. And so I think she's really wanting Bailey Lang to have her defense work with her. You know, everyone needs to just kind of wake up. We haven't seen a whole lot of plays so far other than the one to uh, Derrico at shortstop with the ground ball. Everyone else has kind of been set and still. The ball hasn't come their way. So this is a time to wake up, get ready for a ball to come your way, especially with someone who's leading the team in RBIs with Tross Claire Clatt up to the plate. And Coach Brett Benner used every second she had before the home plate umpire came out to let her know it was time to go back because that was a very pointed conversation. But yeah, she can be none too happy. The catcher's interference to the number eight batter in the lineup then a walk to the number nine. And here you go. 447 to start the day. Kyler Tross Claire Clad is in with the bases loaded and she's gonna send one down the line and right. That's gonna score a couple. And Memphis has taken a two nothing lead. Off the glove of Riley Buck, she was able to get a little bit of leather on it, then it deflected off of it, and Tross Claire Clatt lifts her team. It's 2 nothing Tigers. Aaron Parker advanced to third, by the way, as you see it again. Buck just couldn't quite get enough of that to squeeze it in, and Memphis is on the board first. First pitch to Bailey Smith in there, or it's a ball, excuse me, one ball and no strikes. Bailey Smith, also a really dangerous hitter in the RBI category. She's right behind Tross Claire Clatt, who now has 27 on the season. Bailey Smith just with 23 right behind her. So absolutely someone you want to go at and make sure she doesn't allow another run to be added to her RBI category. And now Lang has fallen behind in the count, two balls and no strikes. Smith popped out to first back in the first inning. She was trying to get a bunt down and instead got it up. 
And the Shockers are gonna get some activity now down in their bullpen. That's not something Bailey Lang is accustomed to in the second inning of a game to see activity stirring in the Shocker bullpen. Boy, that one was close. There's the activity for Wichita State. Mackenzie Weber is taking some warm-up tosses as this one comes high and tight. Ball four, and down to first base goes Smith, and they are loaded again, and Coach Breadbender may have the hook right here. In fact, she does, as it looks like that's gonna do it for Bailey Lang. Ryan Stefankowitz now will come out of the dugout. He's actually gonna signal to the bullpen but a very un-Bailey Lang-like second inning, Jamie, is she started the game off with the walk, but then got the side retired in order after that. But here in the second, it all started with the Delaney Smith single. She got the next two batters out, but that catcher's interference, a walk, single walk, just not the Bailey Lang we're accustomed to seeing. Yeah, it just became, you know, kind of the wheels coming off, as you, you, you tend to say, when something like that starts to happen with a great pitcher in Lang, started to be a little inconsistent, maybe trying to just do too much, you know, not hitting her spots, going left and right, up and up and down. I mean, it was just one of those things that she just wasn't kind of getting her, her feet back on the ground after doing some struggling with the walks and then having the catcher's interference. So just something that you gotta, you know, kind of shrug off and we might see her again if you see that maybe any of the pitching staff for Wichita State starts to struggle. Bailey Lang can absolutely kind of refocus now that she's in the dugout and maybe do some warm ups and potentially be seen again a little later in this game. This will actually be Caitlin Bingham that's going to pitch for Wichita State. We saw Mackenzie Weber warming up. This is uh, Caitlin Bingham that's in to pitch and I think Bailey Lang is staying in the game defensively in right field. So Lang will stay in the lineup, but Caitlin Bingham is on the pitch. There's a look at Bailey, who will stay in again in right field. Caitlin Bingham comes in to pitch. This will be the 16th appearance of the season for her. Seventh in relief, 6.19 her earned run average, two and three the record on the season for Caitlin Bingham. As Bingham got the start in yesterday's game and she left in the fourth inning after three and two thirds. Not bad, Jamie, she just gave up one earned run. She did walk four while she only struck out three, but it was not at all a poor performance for Bingham. Bingham's definitely one of those players who, you know, was a great pitcher all through high school, came in at Wichita State to be both a, a potential player in the lineup at all times, both hitting, but also coming in as a pitcher. Definitely someone who's starting to settle in, looking really good on the mound for Wichita State. Addison Maxwell, the eighth batter to hit for Memphis here in the inning, and the pitch is outside for a ball, 1-0. Maxwell popped out to short back in the first inning. She's 0 for 1. Down and away, 2-0. Memphis has him loaded, leading by two, top of the second inning. Up at the very, very dangerous top part of their order here. And a strike, letter high on the outside edge, 2-1. What Bingham really needs to know is there's two outs, you know, so do what you can just to keep the ball close in the infield, get that next out so you can get your offense started up again. Low, three and one. And I mentioned yesterday, Bingham had one more walk than she had a strikeout. That's kind of been a theme this season, 27 walks to 25 strikeouts in danger here of another. And she did walk in a run. There's ball four, and it's three nothing Tigers. So they all move up. Parker to score. Down to third goes Tross player Quatt, and down to second base goes Smith. On the bases, loaded walk issue to Addison Maxwell. Now the ninth batter to come to the plate for Memphis here in the inning is Ashley Threat. Let's see if Bingham can bounce back here. 
Not on the first pitch, low and away, 1-0. and oh. You saw the uh, catcher, Madison Perrigan, talking to Caitlin Bingham just in between pitches there, just to make sure that she's settling down and that they're working together to find the spots. And right now, it just doesn't look like that that's happening for Bingham, maybe overthrowing just a little bit. And I know Madison Perrigan's gonna do what she can to communicate and try and get on the same page so that these two can get that final out. How quickly can Bailey Klitsky get loose in the bullpen? That might be the question right now you're asking. She's pitched very well lately. Bingham comes back with a much needed strike right there. Threat struck out to end the first inning. Well, there you go, Jamie. Mackenzie Weber still warming up, but so was Klitsky. Two balls and two strikes to count here. Memphis has brought three across here in the inning. Shockers have committed an error as well. They're loaded in the pitch. Chopped foul at the plate, two and two. This is a really big at bat right here for Wichita State, Jamie. If you get out down three nothing, we know what this offense is capable of doing against even a very good pitcher like Molly Smith, and there's still a lot of time left. But at the same time, Memphis has a chance to blow this thing open right here. Yeah, it can go either way. Both teams very effective offensively. So it's just a matter of time to see which one kind of starts to unload first. And so far today, it has been Memphis. Took something off, and that one was close, but a ball, and the count's full three and two. Here it is again. Perhaps low and away. Big pitch here. Swung on and missed strike three. And Memphis leaves them loaded. So they score three, but they leave three. As we go to the bottom of inning number two, Wichita State now down by three. State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Well, Wichita State now has to play catch up, and that's a very tough pitcher right there to do that against, but it's Memphis three, Shockers two, as the Tigers come up with three runs on a couple of hits in the top of the second inning, and now it's Wichita State's turn to try to get back. Now we got some Tiger fans in the house, dressed interestingly enough, as here we go. Well, if you're Bailey Lang, Jamie, I bet you're itching to get up there at the plate. She's going to get her first chance right away as things got away from her a little bit there in the second inning, but now a chance for some redemption. Yeah, what feels good as a pitcher that also hits is that you can come back and you can do something about it. You know, you might not have been on your game with, on the mound, but you can absolutely make a difference at the plate. First pitch from the starting pitcher for Memphis to the starting pitcher for Wichita State is a ball, one ball and no strikes. Bailey's got the average at 294. A couple of homers, 11 runs batted in. And she has really started to swing it well here in the last couple of weeks. Lifts this one on the infield and it's gonna be who? The third baseman, actually the was Aaron Parker at third. He made that catch up the line, one away. So here's Madison Perrigan, somebody, Jamie, that 
I know Christy Bredbenner would really like to see get going. She started to produce the power a couple of weeks ago here at home, a couple of home runs in the homestand a couple of weeks ago, but the batting average just sitting at 216 right now. Takes a strike there. Yeah, Perrigan struggled this series thus far. She's 0 for 2 in both games, but with a couple of walks. So at least getting on base, making a difference in that category. But as you mentioned, she's got some power. So it's just a matter of when it's getting turned on and at the right time. And this would be definitely a chance for her to get something going for Wichita State. That one dropped down in, but inside of the plate. And the count is one ball and one strike to Madison Perrigan. Smith set and delivers, swung on and missed. Perrigan now down on the count, one ball and two strikes. Perrigan had a home run against Arkansas, which was the first home game of the year for Wichita State a couple of Tuesdays ago. Then in the very next game on Friday against Western Illinois, or Saturday, excuse me, she delivered another. Swung on and missed there though, strike three, and down she goes, and Perrigan a strikeout victim. That's the third of the game for Molly Smith. And now here's Asia Weber. Shockers do not want to go quickly here in the second and send those Memphis sticks right back up to the plate. Yeah, in the last two games, which Test State struck out four times throughout the entire game. And so far, just in the short amount of time we've been playing today, we've seen three strikeouts already. So just a matter of refocusing, putting a ball to the bat and not swinging at pitches outside the zone. That would mean Ma uh, Molly Smith now with 133 strikeouts on the season, starting the day at 130. One and one to Weber as Asia goes up high and comes up empty. Asia one for three yesterday with an RBI. 0 for three against Molly Smith though on Friday night. Here's the one one. In tight, two and one. Morgan Palmer waits on deck. Actually, Caitlin Bingham, who came into pitch, is now batting in the nine spot for Wichita State, as that one is outside. And the count's three and one. Time is called, out from behind the plate. Reagan Hadley comes to talk to her pitcher with a count three balls and a strike. Shockers again. In Stillwater Tuesday night, that'll be a six o'clock first pitch against Oklahoma State. At UConn next weekend, Wichita State then has a midweek game against Kansas here, April the 4th. Their next conference series will be here against the familiar opponent of Tulsa a couple of weekends from now. There's a strike and the count's now full at three and two. Well, it ought to be a lot of fun having Tulsa as a conference rival for Wichita State once again. Yeah, with the distance that they have from Wichita to Tulsa, they've absolutely seen each other a number of times. It'll be really interesting now to see it on a different level in the American. Strike three called, Weber caught looking and down she goes. Asia didn't think so, but that's the fourth strike out of the game already for Molly Smith. We've only played two. And Memphis leads by three. State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. 
The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. On to the third inning, three nothing Memphis. Here's strike three to Asia Weber, and we were wondering if that looked a little bit outside, and it, if it wasn't, it just barely caught the black on the outside part of the plate. Yeah, Asia Weber, you can see her just very surprised that that was a called strike. Not only was it already outside, but it continued outside as catcher Hadley from Memphis stood up to throw the ball to the mound for, for strike three. So. Definitely a, a questionable call and one that unfortunately Weber has been the victim of a few times this weekend. Well, and if you're Asia Weber, you just, I guess, have to swing at those because you know that consistently, and you will at least say that for this umpiring crew, it's been called a strike all series long. You just have to start swinging at those. Here's Delaney Smith, though. Memphis is going to get their crack first, and the first pitch to Smith in there. Well, excuse me, that's a ball, 1-0. Smith singled in the second inning when Memphis batted around. One hopper back to Bingham, nicely done by Caitlin, a toss to first, one away. So Smith started the second inning with a single. She later scored in the inning. Here, a bouncer right back to Bingham. Good reflexes by Caitlin in the circle. Yeah, again with Smith putting the ball straight into the ground as a slap hitter and Bingham doing a great job as a pitcher. Sometimes that throw can be one of the hardest you have to make and she did a great job just taking it slow and making that easy out. Brooke Lee steps in now and swings and misses nothing in one. Not only, Jamie, is it a big out to get Delaney Smith because she hits 383, but as we touched on, a tremendous base stealer as well. It's almost like it's an automatic trip to second base if she singles. Much easier start to the inning for the Shockers here defensively. A 5-3 put out as McKenzie Wright throws out Brooke Lee on her way down to first base, two away. Yeah, this is the kind of start you want to see defensively, especially after giving up a few runs last inning. Don't let the wheels continue to fall off, put it all back together. That's the game of softball, though. It's a fresh start each inning, so that's a great job by the Shockers to get the first two outs quickly. And in Bingham's defense, it's not always easy to come in against a very good hitting team with the bases loaded. And sometimes it takes you a little bit to get, to uh, to get uh, your tosses and get your confidence. Starting an inning off fresh appears to be the key for her here. A little rocky when she came in in the second inning with the bases loaded. She appears now to have settled in. Reagan Hadley the batter, two balls and no strikes. Chopped foul over toward the Memphis dugout, two and one. Opponents hitting 288 against Caitlin Bingham on the season. Kendall Lee is the on deck batter for Memphis. But there are two outs, nobody on. Tigers leading three nothing and the pitch. Hot shot, one hopper to right. This will be an easy one, two, three after a rocky second. So the Tigers go in order after two and a half though. They've got a three run lead.
The Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes is the perfect place to spend time with family and friends. Open to the public, the Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes features eight bowling lanes, billiard tables, plus great food and beverages like freshly made burgers, sandwiches, salads, cold beer, and more. The Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes, located in the lower level of the Radigan Student Center, is the perfect place as well for kids' birthday parties, group events, or a night out with friends. The Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes, bringing you Shocker softball on a Sunday. Sunday afternoon from Wilkins Stadium or the Wichita State Shockers playing some catch up today down by the score of three nothing as we start the bottom half of inning number three and it'll be Caitlin Bingham that'll lead off for Wichita State then back to the top of the order with Mackenzie Wright and Bailey Nickerson. So here we go Smith to Bingham first pitch is strike nothing and one Morgan Palmer was Originally going to start in this spot as the hitter for Wichita State batting ninth, but when the early exit came for Bailey Lang, Bingham moved into the nine spot. And she is now up there against Molly Smith. That one had a little bit of movement on it, but it was down and in, one and one. Caitlin 273 on the year. She does have a couple of homers and eight runs batted in. There's a strike and it's one and two and another one that a shocker hitter thought missed outside. A pretty wide zone it appears today for this home plate umpire, one and two. Yeah, those are the pitches that I think this Wichita State coaching staff is telling their team to lay off of. And unfortunately for them, the call is definitely going in the favor of Memphis. And you know, as Molly Smith, as a pitcher, when you're getting the call, you're gonna stay out there all day because it's not really a place that a hitter is gonna get a nice hit off of. If anything, they may foul it off. But if you're getting the call, you gotta keep it there and continue to do what you know how to do and that's get the strike called. One and two as Smith looks to get dialed in again to Caitlin Bingham. That one was working on the outside, but too far outside for sure that time. The count is even now, two balls and two strikes. Caitlin did have a plate appearance against Molly Smith on Friday night. She was 0 for 1 came on as a pinch hitter late in the game. Down and in, and the count's full now at three and two. Bingham did have a base hit yesterday. In fact, it produced two runs as well. There's a two RBI single in the very first inning as the Shockers were on their way to an 11 to one route of Memphis. It's a pretty good piece of this one down into the corner and left. That's gonna sail out of play though. In fact, it lands on the roof of the batting facility and the count's still three and two. Mackenzie Wright waits on deck. Nine, one and two for Wichita State here in the bottom of the third. Counts full to Bingham. Pitcher versus pitcher here. High and away, ball four, and down to first base goes Bingham. So a leadoff walk for Wichita State, second time in three innings. They've had their leadoff batter aboard. The first time it happens was when the young lady stepping up to the plate now delivered a bottom of the first double. Mackenzie Wright stepping in. That's the first walk actually given up by Smith today. So that's absolutely the, the right time to come and do it is Bingham, you know, as a pitcher in this game, she knows that it takes one at a time. And so it's an awesome job by her to have a good eye, get herself on base and get this offense started for Wichita State. Mackenzie Wright, a line drive double that hooked down the left field line back in the first inning. Takes a strike here, nothing in one. And Mackenzie kind of smiled almost as if she was saying there's that outside strike again. Smith to right. 
And again, right on the outside edge. That one did look like it caught it though. Nonetheless, the count's nothing in two. I think Mackenzie Wright's also probably thinking, well, yep, you know, on Friday when I faced Molly Smith, everything was inside. Now she's going outside with it. That one definitely looking like a much better spot. <laughs> definitely deserving of the called strike there. Now it's just a matter of adjusting as an offensive player in right. And now protecting the plate as well. Nothing in two, the pitch. She does, lifts it, center field. Delaney Smith started out, now comes in and makes the catch. And there's the first out of the inning, a big one. As Wright flies out to center field. So holding at first base is Caitlin Bingham. So here's Bailey Nickerson now. Picking up where she left off yesterday. Nickerson, a single in this game is one for one. Bailey yesterday though was two for three and Jamie, she also scored four runs yesterday. So you wanna talk about a busy day, both at the plate and the base paths, four runs scored for her. She had four plate appearances. There was also a walk thrown in there. So four trips to the plate, each time she got on base and each time she came around to score. That's She's, a productive day. Right, and she has a lot of power too. We've seen that out of her with the long ball, but then today her hit is actually a bunt to the pitcher. So she can do it all. You're exactly right. She's been busy and been uh, flexible as far as the types of things she'll do to get on base. Smith pulls the string again, called the strike on the inside edge. One ball and one strike. And once again, we're really seeing Molly Smith mix it up well and try to keep these hitters off balance. And so far, for the most part, she's done just that. That time she comes with a heater coming upstairs, fouled into the glove of Hadley, one and two. Yeah, Smith's got a nice mix here. We've seen an off speed. She's in a strikes on the outside corner. Nice rise ball up and in. So she's moving it around. Definitely doing a good job out on the mound today. Foul back to the screen, still one and two. Lori Derrico waits on deck. Now the Shockers are glad they only have to see Molly Smith for one season. She is a senior. But Christy Breadbenner knows her hitters have their work cut out when they face that young lady right there. She is quite the pitcher, one and two here. With a runner at first and one away. Shockers down by three, bottom of the third. This one is well struck to left field. Back goes Smith at the fence and it's gone. And a home run for Nickerson, her second of this series and the Shockers are down by one. There's not a whole lot of wind today, but Bailey sent that one out anyway to left field. And here it is, home run number four of the season for her. I have a feeling she knew that one too. We talked about that from Friday night. She knew it when it went over and she knew it again, put her head straight down, took off, and here she comes getting her team rallied up. And that is now her fifth time to score this weekend. That's, I mean, that's insane. Or at least it, in the, within the last four times she's been at the plate, the fifth time that she's scored and come all the way around. So what a good job from the freshman in the two spot for Wichita State. So now Lori Derrico, a little cue stick out to second. Brooke Lee throws to first. Yeah, that's actually the sixth time she scored since Friday night. You're right, it's the fifth just in the last two days, but had the home run and obviously a run scored Friday. So Bailey Nickerson's offensive production this weekend continues and we've all of a sudden got a one run game. Here's Paige Llewellyn, somebody very capable now of tying the thing up with one swing of the bat. And, and Jamie, I want to go back to Caitlin Bingham leaving the bases loaded in the second inning. We should not forget that, even though Memphis did score three times, Bingham came in and help Memphis leave them loaded if Wichita State's to get this game turned around. Remember that in the second inning. Here's Paige Llewellyn taking a strike, nothing and one. 
through all the frustrations Wichita State had in the second inning, and Bingham actually was part of the trouble. She walked them with the bases loaded. Still, Memphis left them loaded. Now Wichita State here in the bottom of the third is only down one. Way outside, one and one to Llewellyn. So the Shockers have now out hit Memphis three to two. Memphis has outscored the Shockers by that same number though, three to two. Back over the screen, one ball and two strikes. Wichita State, as I mentioned in the first inning, only four hits off of Molly Smith Friday. They've already pulled within one of that. And I think just by that alone, you can tell this team has done a good job of going back and really looking at film and making adjustments between Friday and today against Molly Smith. Llewellyn, shallow to right, and that's gonna be caught by Brooke Lee, the second baseman, with her back to the infield. Nice job to retire the side, but the Shockers get a big blast from Bailey Nickerson. They pull the whip at one, three to two, as we head to inning number four on WSU TV. University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Well, the Shocker defense got a little boost there thanks to Caitlin, or excuse me, Bailey Nickerson, that young lady right there, and her two-run homer. Nickerson has helped put the Shockers within a run. Three to two as we start the fourth inning. It'll be Kendall Lee that'll start things off for Memphis, then Aaron Parker and Kyler Trostclair Platt. Eight, nine, and one for Memphis. Bingham delivers low to Kendall Lee, one ball and no strikes. Last time these two came up, Jamie, the eight, nine hitters, I talked about the fact that they're the only two for Memphis below 300 in batting average, so I think it's especially important if you're Bingham to get both of them out before you turn to the big sticks. You'd love to face Tross Claire Clatt with two outs and nobody on. Absolutely, and you saw Lee and Parker both get on with a free pass. Lee last time with the catcher's interference, Parker with a walk, so absolutely um, imperative for this Wichita State defense to get the first two outs of this inning. Chopped at the plate, foul, two balls and a strike. By far the least windy of the three days we've seen here at Wilkins Stadium this weekend. And as the two on, up a little bit high, three and one. There you see the wind blowing out of the south today. We've seen it blow from each direction. It was in from the north and left field Friday night, then out of the south yesterday and today a light breeze out of the south as there's ball four and not what Bingham wanted is she walks Kendall Lee the number eight hitter in the Memphis lineup and the leadoff batter is aboard. Coming into today Kendall Lee had one walk on the season so now having gotten on with the catcher's interference and picking up her second walk on the season definitely looking like the Wichita State pitching staff is struggling against the eight nine hole today. Boy, that's got to be giving Ryan Stefankiewicz, the shocker pitching coach, fits because that is something you just can't afford to do against a team that hits the ball so, so well, one through seven. Upstairs for a ball, one and one. 
Parker was showing bunt earlier in this at bat, and if she does that successfully with a sacrifice, then you've got a 447 hitter stepping up to the plate starting the day with a runner in scoring position. One and one. Way outside, two and one. Shocker defense would love to see a double play opportunity here with a ground ball. Mackenzie Wright very, very shallow over at third, but that's partly because she's anticipating a bunt. Instead, it's a slap out to Derrico. Her only throw will be to first. So it worked like a sacrifice, but it's a ground ball out, 6-3, but the runner does advance to second base for Troth, Claire Clatt, who's about to step in. So one away here in the top of the fourth inning. There it is for Lori, pretty easily done at about 10 o'clock on the pitcher circle. Trost Claire Clatt, one for one, a first inning walk, then a two RBI single in the second inning. That was a hot shot off of Riley Buck's glove over at first base, but it was off the very top of the glove and deflected on down the right field line, two scored. Two of the three that scored for Memphis in the second inning. Well, again, there's consistency because that one, I think Tross Claire Clatt thought might have been a little bit outside, but called a strike. Tross Claire Clatt, definitely another one of those big time seniors here for the Memphis lineup. You know, we talk about Molly Smith on the mound as a senior. Tross Claire Clatt, also a senior. Two very, very productive players for this Memphis lineup, especially this weekend thus far. Somebody at Wichita State has struggled to get out. Fouled back and out of play. This team, as you look at their roster, Jamie, has a really good mix of both seniors and underclassmen. So obviously they're going to lose Smith and this great hitter here. But Natalie Poole, I'm sure, feels very good about what she's got coming back. Many freshmen and sophomores in the lineup we're going to see today. There's a liner into center field. That's going to be a base hit. And that leadoff walk is going to come back to bite Wichita State. It's 4-2. to two. Memphis has the lead. And that's exactly why it can hurt you to walk batters at the bottom part of this Memphis lineup because those hitters like Tross Claire Clad at the top, so very good. Third RBI of the day for Tross Claire Clatt. That is now 28 for her on the season. Four to two, Tigers with the lead. So Bailey Smith will step in now. Tross Claire Clatt advanced to second, by the way, on the throw home. So she is in scoring position as well. In there for a strike, nothing in one. Bailey Smith, 0 for 1. Flot flew out in the first inning, walked in the second. Outside. Jamie, we've talked at times when we've discussed Mackenzie Wright, how difficult it can be when you're the leadoff hitter to really rack up the RBIs because you're up at the plate after the 7, 8, 9 hitters, not normally as proficient as getting on base. Hot shot fair, left field line down to the corner. Tross Claire Clatt is going to round third and score easily. That'll be a double, and it's now a 5 2 Memphis lead. 24th run batted into the season for Bailey Smith, no doubt about it. And Tross Claire Clatt flying around third. It was no doubt she was going to score. Now this is Memphis stringing the hits together. When you talk about hitting being contagious, everyone in the lineup is feeling it right now. And you can see the excitement as Tross Claire Clatt passes home plate to get that fifth run for Wichita State. Now you've got, you know, Smith, who's a freshman, Bailey Smith out on second base, also having a phenomenal season so far, but definitely accustomed to getting the RBI. So they're just stringing them together and doing what works. Bouncer foul outside the line at third. Just back to that point though about Sometimes the difficulties leadoff hitters can have in driving home runs, Jamie. 
This gives you an idea of how good this Memphis lineup is, one through nine, because Kyler Trost Claire Klatt has 28 RBIs for Memphis. That leads the team, and she's their leadoff hitter because everybody gets on base for that team. Riley Buck catches Hecker's throw to first. Buck nearly, or excuse me, Hecker nearly committed an error right there, but got rid of it in time for a 4-3 put out. Bailey Smith advances to third base. But how about a leadoff hitter for any team leading the team with nearly 30 runs batted in at this stage in the season? Yeah, that's phenomenal. I mean, that definitely shows you that your teammates are getting on base ahead of you, and they probably know, hey, you know what? If I get on base, I'm most likely going to score because with Tross Claire Clack coming up to the base or up to the plate, she has the opportunity of getting me in. And, you know, she's got the most at bats, too. Um, 105 you know, now at bats on the season. So she's doing a great job getting back up to the plate multiple times. Um, she's well over almost 20 more at bats than the rest of the team. So she's up there a lot. Here's Ashley Threat now, and she slices one pretty well struck left field, and that one's gone. She had struck out twice today, not here, and it's six to two Memphis on the home run for Threat. Her sixth of the season, runs batted in, 18 and 19. Memphis now a five-run lead. It's actually seven to two. As you watch this one, sail out of here. Yeah, that's Threat's sixth home run. But as you mentioned, Steve, she was struggling so far today, having two strikeouts swinging to end both this first and the second inning for her team. And then coming in and providing a lot of power, showing that she's got six home runs on the season, actually leading her team in that category. So someone who can absolutely turn the game around with one swing of the bat, although she has struggled today. Well, she's hitting cleanup for a reason, and she just showed why with her sixth homer. Now Delaney Smith steps in, and Smith takes a ball, one ball and no strikes. So Memphis with a three spot in the second and two innings later, they've put up four here in the fourth. A strike to even things up one and one. Seven to two Memphis now has the lead. That's back up the shoot into center, but coming on Nickerson, and she makes a nice catch to retire the side, but not before a four spot by the Tigers. It all started with a leadoff walk and was finished with Ashley Threat going the other way. Shockers down five halfway through from Wilkins Stadium. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Memphis bats have exploded here on Sunday. They now lead by the score of seven to two, five hits for the Tigers as well. Steve Strain and Jamie Hall with you on a Sunday afternoon from Wilkins Stadium. And Jamie, you, you started to wonder when Memphis's bats would start to come alive because they did scatter nine hits Friday night and three runs, but held in check yesterday with just one run on two hits, and it seems they've saved the best for the last game of this series. 
Yeah, and you can also see the difference in Wichita State's hitting. You know, game one with four hits, game two with 11 hits, and today with just three. So it's just a matter of, you know, turning it on. As we mentioned, both of these teams very effective offensively. So just a matter of time before you see one kind of outrun the other. And, and today it's definitely been Memphis with the power at the plate. So Riley Buck, the first to try and get things turned around for Wichita State. She's 0 for 1, struck out swinging in the second or in the first inning. One of four strikeout victims for Molly Smith on the afternoon against just one walk so far. One ball and no strikes to Buck. Good pitch there. Evens things up at one apiece. Wichita State trying to pick up their 18th win of the season against 17 or 11 losses. Liner, left field line, that's down, that'll be a base hit. Smith does a good job getting over to the corner in a hurry and firing it back to the infield and keeping that as a single, but Riley Buck is aboard over at first base. Well, there's somebody that's pretty quietly gone about her business this season, Jamie. Not a lot of power numbers, one home run, but Riley had the average starting the day at 325 and a nice piece of hitting here. That's what you want to see for average hitting right there. It's just a matter of getting on base, you know, making a difference by one, one base at a time, and she did exactly that. Made good contact, get it out to the outfield, get your team started a little bit. We saw that same start with McKenzie Wright in inning number one, and, um, you know, they fell short there, so it's a matter of coming back and, and making a difference here when you can get your lead off on base. Now Bailey Lang swings and misses at the first offering from Smith, nothing in one. Bailey popped out to third to lead off the second inning. Bailey stayed in the game after leaving the pitcher's circle. She's been in the outfield since the second inning. Takes a strike here and down on the count now, nothing in two. Now trying to make something happen at the plate, something she's done her fair share of the last couple of weeks. Got the average up to 294 now. And among team leaders in doubles as well this season is Bailey Lang. Slices one to left. This one's gonna get down. It's gonna bang off the fence on a hop. And that's gonna give Wichita State a pair in scoring position. Speaking of doubles, another one for Bailey Lang. Her sixth of the season. And now she is tied for the team high in that department with Lori Derrico. And how about Lang going the other way to pick up the two back? Yeah, that's a huge adjustment. We've seen this outside pitch from Molly Smith being called a strike by the umpire staff today, and then Lang knew it. That was exactly where that strike has been called all day. And although it may not have been close, it was something she put a nice little piece of hitting together to get it all the way out to the outfield and, and keep her team rolling. No outs, two runners in scoring position, Lang providing a nice little rally, hopefully, for this Wichita State offense. Well, we've talked about this young lady trying to get things going. Madison Perrigan offensively. This would be a great opportunity right here for Madison as the Shockers trying to climb back into this thing down by five about halfway through the ball game. Good swing that time, but fouls it back and out of play. Nothing in one. Perrigan struck out swinging in the second inning. 0 for 1. Started the day with an average at 216. But she does have three home runs all of them in this ballpark this season. Stays off the pitch upstairs, one and one. 16 runs batted in on the season for Paragon and as nice it would, as it would be to see her hit a home run, just want to keep the line moving as well here is fine. The Shockers are consent with even a base hit. It could score one, possibly two. Big swing here, driven to center field. This is going to stay in the ballpark. Delaney Smith comes on, makes the catch. We're going to have a play at the plate. Safe, though, sliding in his buck, and down to third now goes Lang. So it will be a sacrifice fly for Paragon, almost as good as a base hit. She does get the RBI. 
And the Shockers have now pulled to within seven to three. You know, you mentioned right before that swing, Steve, that if Perrigan could just get it into a base hit somewhere, it didn't have to leave the yard by any means, although she does have the, the power to do that, that's the next best thing to do is get it out to the outfield far enough that you can have a nice little tag play from Buck and get your team going run by run. Now Asia Weber will step in. Asia also a strikeout victim in the second inning, as was Perrigan. So she is 0 for 1. I think she felt like that one was down and in, but called a strike. I don't think Asia or Christy Bredbender liked that strike call, and Weber's down in the count. Weber's been a victim of some pretty tough calls today. Seeing a lot more of the outside pitches than the inside, so I think that might be one of the first times she's seen one come in, and as you can see there, that's typically where Molly Smith has kept her, is on that outside part of the plate. Yeah, you're right. The times that Asia has gone down looking this series, they've all been pitches that were either outside or at least Asia thought they were, and that time Molly Smith was working the outer part. One ball and one strike. Goes there again, misses though, perhaps high and away, and it's two and one. Hits are even at five apiece. Memphis has outscored the Shockers seven to three though. Wichita State's committed the game's only error. Swing and a miss for Weber, and the count's even at two and two. Caitlin Bingham waits on deck. Smith continuing to work the outside. That one misses and the count's now full at three and two. That's a very similar pitch that we've seen called a strike so far on Weber today. So just a matter of time before she was able to get that call in her favor. Smith though continuing to do a good job working the corners against this Wichita State offense. The payoff pitch working the outer edge again. Weber stays alive by fighting it off and fouling it out of play, and the count still full at three and two. Kind of a big game for Wichita State from the perspective, Jamie, that you've got to go to Stillwater Tuesday night, and then all the way out to Connecticut on for their series next weekend. Making a long road trip, that's never easy. I'd much rather tackle those consecutive games played on the road, going in with a good taste in your mouths, and that would happen today with a victory. Liner, left center, that's down, it's gonna roll to the fence, and Asia Weber's gonna get an RBI. She's gonna motor into second base with another double this inning, and Wichita State has pulled to within three now, as it's seven to four. See a nice smile on Asia Weber's face. She's been frustrated so far this series because she's had a lot of tough calls not going her way, and then she takes that outside pitch. Really tough play for Tross Claire Clatt at uh, Memphis's shortstop position, trying to do sh her best to make sure that that bullet doesn't hit the fence, and unfortunately for her, it does. Goes all the way to the wall and provides Wichita State with their fourth run of the game. Well, one thing we know about this Shocker team, always loaded with dangerous sticks, is you can never count them out. And there is still a lot of softball left just in the bottom of the fourth inning. And it doesn't matter the caliber of pitcher. This team has a knack for the dramatic sometimes in late innings. And maybe we're starting to see the beginning of that here. A fly out to second this time. Weber will tag and go to third alertly on a fly ball down the right field line. So Bingham is retired, but tagging and heading to third was Asia Weber alertly. So we'll go back to the top of the order now with Mackenzie Wright and see if not only she can keep the inning alive, but possibly get Asia Weber home from third base. 
Mackenzie Wright sent a few to the outfield today. That's definitely what Wichita State's looking for her to do here too. Pick up another run, keep this offensive outing for Wichita State alive. That one tailed down. Bell appeal is right, was able to check her swing, they say on the appeal. Yeah, McKenzie, a line drive, hooking double down the left field line in the first inning, and then pretty well struck one in the third, but it was caught in center field. So she's one for two, but swung the bat pretty well both times today. Here's the 1-0. Up the third baseline, just trickles foul. So the count is even to McKenzie, one ball and one strike. One of the toughest things to do as a hitter is when you know an outside pitch is coming your way, it's waiting on it and letting it get to you. And you saw McKenzie Wright is, is anxious. She really wants to get a big hit for her team right here. So she took that outside pitch down the third baseline, kind of pulled it a little bit. She let that come all the way in. She's gonna have a better shot at taking that to the opposite side and really putting a nice little piece of hitting together for her at bat. Shockers have now out hit Memphis 6-5 after Asia Weber's double moments ago. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. In tight 2-1. and one. Be pretty significant for Wichita State, Jamie, if McKenzie can get aboard because Bailey Nickerson swinging the bat very well and she represents the tying run. So if McKenzie's able to get aboard here, Bailey, if she does what she did last time, could tie this thing up. Fly ball, center field, moving over to her left, her left is Smith. She'll make the catch and the side retired, but the Shockers pull a little closer after they score two, thanks to a leadoff single and double. We go to the fifth, 7-4 Tigers. Well, the Shockers are gonna try their third pitcher of the day and one who's done very well this weekend, Bailey Klitschke taking the circle for Wichita State. So it'll be Klitschke that tries to hold the Tigers in check here in the fifth against Brooke Lee, Reagan Hadley, and Kendall Lee, six, seven, and eight for Memphis facing Bailey Klitschke. And there you see the numbers, Jamie, and she has again fared very well this weekend. Klitschke terrific in three innings on Friday night, came on yesterday only for an inning and a third, but did the job very well also on Saturday. Yeah, Klitschke's looking really, really good against Memphis so far this weekend. You know, you had Bailey Lang in there from the left side, then bringing in Bingham from the right. And now you're getting to see another lefty come in in Klitschke, someone who's done an awesome job, as you mentioned on Friday. She had three strikeouts and three innings pit so definitely did what she needed to do to get the outs when necessary. And, you know, coming in yesterday with, uh, in relief of Bingham also doing an awesome job for Wichita State. Four and a third innings total in the series for Klitschke. Three hits is all she's allowed. She's walked a couple and struck out three. The first batter she'll face, Brooke Lee, fouls one off. Nothing in one to Lee. Klitschke is going to enter the game for Paige Llewellyn in the lineup for Wichita State, and Caitlin Bingham now goes to the designated player position. That one low, one ball and one strike.
14th appearance of the season for Klitschke, and all but two of them have been now in relief. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Down low for a ball. 28 and two-thirds innings for Klitschke on the season. 21 walks, 30 strikeouts. Opponents batting 252 against her. Fouled at the plate, two and two. And Jamie, of course, Klitsky saw very little action once conference play started last season with Katie Malone and Jenny Brooks pitching so well for this team, but you get the feeling she started to make that improvement that you want to see between a freshman and a sophomore year. Yeah, that's a great kind of duo to be a, a member of as a part of the pitching staff as a freshman now going into her sophomore season, knowing exactly what it takes to be pretty productive as a pitcher here for WSU. Hecker with the chance there. Tosses to first. Brooke Lee is retired. 4-3 for the first out of the inning. And you want to see players continue to get better from their freshman to sophomore, sophomore to junior, junior to senior year. And usually that biggest improvement you expect to happen between the freshman and sophomore year. And it seems like that's happened for Klitsky here. Popped up right side. Another chance for Hecker and Kaylee hauls it in. Two quick outs. So Bailey getting the job done here. Another thing about Bailey is she's always in tune with the game. She's excited, she's always moving, she's loud, she keeps her team going. So when she's not pitching, she is still a big part of this Wichita State team when she is able to really just keep her attitude high and be one of those people that you can look to for encouragement in the dugout. Looks like she's gonna get a very easy inning here. One, two, three, after Kendall Lee grounds out to third. Klitsky does the job. Shockers coming up, down by three. To the bottom of the fifth we go. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Shocker fans, if you want to shop the largest selection of Shocker merchandise at the official bookstore of Wichita State, check out the University Bookstore located on the first floor of the Radigan Student Center on campus. You can also shop online 24-7 at wsubooks.com. Find everything you need for every generation of Shocker Nation. Join our Shocker Rewards program for cash back on future purchases as well. The University Bookstore, the place to shop. Well, Bailey Klitsky did the job for Wichita State in the top of the fifth inning. Now, can the bats come alive again as they did in the bottom of the fourth? We shall see. Seven to four is our score as we get this one started. Bailey Nickerson will step in and lead it off for Wichita State here in frame number five. And she takes an off speed from Molly Smith in their first strike. Good looking pitch, nothing at one. Boy, Smith really does a good job with that pitch, Jamie, of starting it off about letter high, if not higher, and letting it fall right into the zone. Yeah, you, she's got great command of that changeup, and it's pretty, to say the least. It's absolutely going exactly where she wants it to, and she can do it at any time in the at bat. That shows that she's got a lot of command and a lot of power with that pitch. One ball and one strike now to Nickerson, of course, with that home run to left field in the third inning that Gave Wichita State their first two runs of the game. At the time, it made the score three to two. We're at seven to four now as Nickerson takes a strike. 
that change has to be so frustrating too because by the time it crosses the plate, it is right in the zone. But it starts off so high that players are apt to take it and watch it come right by. And it sinks right in. It's a pretty pitch. As a hitter, you have multiple times in your head probably thinking, I could swing, I can swing. And then I don't swing because it's not my plan. And that's okay, you know. If that's not your plan to hit that pitch, let it go and let it be pretty. Let it land where it needs to land. And then continue with your at-bat looking for the ball that's really going to make a difference for you. One ball and two strikes to Nickerson, Jamie, who is two for two today. Just continuing to swing the bat well. Scored six runs in this series. She was on base every time she stepped up to the plate yesterday, and that's been the case here today with a two for two outing so far. Hot shot toward Coach Brett Benner there, and Christie steps out of the way wisely, and the count still one and two. But what a freshman season Nickerson is having, particularly here in the last few weeks. Down and in for a ball. Two balls and two strikes. It's gotta be encouraging too when you're Christy Breadbender, Jamie, and are looking at Molly Smith, the pitcher right there, and knowing that Bailey Nickerson has hit two home runs against her and hit the ball the way that she has as a freshman. That only bodes well for the future in center field for Wichita State. When you've got a freshman hitting the ball the way she is against the type of pitter, pitcher that she is hitting it against. Yeah, Smith is absolutely up there as far as the, the type of pitchers you're going to continue to see throughout the season in the American Conference and even beyond into uh, postseason play. This is the type of pitching you're going to continue to see. Great movement, great command, nice change up, you know, great leadership all around. So as a freshman, when you can come in and make a difference, that shows a lot and that's a lot of promise for the Wichita State team and coaching staff. Full count here. And a bouncing ball right side. Going to be gloved by Lee nicely to her left. She ranges and tosses to first for a 4-3 put out one away. That was also a big out for Memphis with Lori Garrico coming up, who's also swinging the bat very well. Here it is again. Yeah, that's a nice play right into the hole. As you mentioned, Bailey Nickerson being a tough out. So that's a really great job both by Molly Smith and by second baseman Lee to get the out. Lori is due, swinging the bat so well lately, but 0 for 2 today, and she's not gotten the ball out of the infield yet. So you get the feeling this third time through for her, maybe she's going to have a better read on things, and let's see if Lori can't make solid contact here. Ground out to third in the first inning, to second in the third. She is one, it's hard to keep down long. Outside, 2-0. Oh. Lloyd started the day at 345 with the batting average before her 0 for 2 start to the afternoon. Down and in, and she's ahead in the count here, 3-0. Starting to see more blue sky above Wilkins Stadium and slightly fewer clouds as we approach 1 o'clock Central Time in Wichita. And there's a good look at it right there. Shocker baseball team in action today. They'll be taking on Furman in the three-game of a series across the way at X Stadium. As Wichita State's baseball team tries to continue their very nice Start to the season. Close in there, in fact, to strike three and one. Turned into not a bad day for softball, Jamie, considering we had some moisture early this morning. In fact, the game started 15 minutes late because they had to take care of the field and get it in better playing condition. Popped up. This one is behind the plate and it's gonna sail out of play and the count's now full at three and two. 
It's been a while in Wichita that we've had a whole lot of rain. So honestly, although it wasn't the, the best timing because it was right before a softball game, it didn't hurt anything. The field still looks great. In fact, Wichita, the city could probably use a little bit more rain from that particular storm. But you know, hey, at the end of the day, it started us a little late, but it's turned into a really beautiful day here in the spring. Full count to Derrico with nobody on and one away. In tight, ball four, and Lori gets the free pass. She'll make her way to first base. So Derrico draws the one-out walk, and Bailey Klitsky is due to come up to the plate. Christy Bredbenner has asked for time, and she's going to speak with her assistant coaches before we proceed. Klitsky starting to see more plate appearances here in the last couple of weeks as well, and Picked up her first career hit as a shocker last week up in Nebraska. And Bailey, of course, came on to pitch in the last inning. And now both Elizabeth Economan and Ryan Stefankowitz have some words for Klitsky. Do you think they were contemplating Bailey bunting right here? And was that maybe what coach was asking is, do we want her to bunt? Is that a part of the strategy? Down three runs in the fifth inning. Yeah, you kind of look at, you know, Klitsky's not your, she's not gonna hit all the time. She's a pitcher through and through. She is used to hitting, having hit in high school, but coming into the college scene, she's had a lot more at bats than she's used to. So I think they were just discussing what her game plan should be at the plate. And well, she's got a good one. She's swinging away. <laughs> And safe at first base is going to be Klitsky on a base hit. I think Memphis is claiming interference right there. I don't think I saw any, though. And it's first and second. Memphis is acting bewildered here. I don't know if they thought that ball hit Derrico on her way to second base. It sure didn't look like it. Brooke Lee had to deflect off her glove. Here it is again. Yeah, actually, that was the first baseman, Ashley Threat. It hit her glove, and on to second went Derrico. If it did hit Derrico, it hit her after it deflected off the glove of Threat. Well, it looks like it got tangled up in her legs there in the replay, from what I could tell. The best view would certainly be the umpire staff, though, there that was right in now, the midst of it. Now, here's the question, and I don't know the answer to this. If it hits Threat's glove first and then deflects off of the base runner, is the base runner out then? Because that might have happened. It might have hit Derrico after it hit Threat's glove. Here it is again. Now, if that happens, is Derrico out? The ruling on the field is she's safe. So regardless, Lori is standing out at second base. That's a scenario I could see happening. And you rarely see it where a, a ball deflects off of a fielder's glove, then hits a base runner. It's rare enough that you see it hit the base runner clean. Maybe it deflected off of Lori after it hit Threat's glove. And maybe that's Memphis's argument is she should still be out there. But I don't think that argument is going very far with the umpires from Natalie Poole. Well, the, the question then becomes then when it leads off of Threat's glove, was there potential that Lee could have made a play? And that might be a conversation that they're having. It's hard to really predict something like that, but from what I can tell and what we can see from our view is that the ruling stands that Derrico is safe at second base nonetheless. Well, and this is big because that sends the tying run to the plate with one out here in the inning and it's Riley Buck that's stepping in. So things getting a little interesting here again as the Shockers were down five in the top of the fourth inning, now down by three, and they've got the tying run at the plate. It's still a live ball if the ball hits the glove, then the base runner. So I'm not sure at all what Memphis was arguing there. First pitch to Buck is a ball, one ball and no strikes. But the Shockers do have runners at first and second, one away, top at bottom of the fifth inning. In a seven to four game, Riley Buck at the plate, one for two today. She has singled and struck out. Swing and a miss there. Count now even at one ball and one strike. 
Bailey Lang waits on deck. And let's go back to Bailey Klitsky because of the controversy. We didn't talk about that, but what a hot smash she hit. What a job. And now her second career hit. And let's also throw into that the caliber of pitcher she did it against, too. Yeah, Klitsky's definitely taken on her role as both a pitcher and a hitter this season because of the lineup situation that they've got with the Shockers. The pitcher is typically hitting when they're in the lineup, when they're on the mound, and Klitsky's been coming in, taking a few extra hacks, and really accepting the role that she has um, fallen into and is doing a great job so far. Um, and like you said, Steve, against some great pitching like Molly Smith today. It's so different to see the Shockers using their pitchers as hitters but Bailey Lang, and now you've got to throw Klitsky into the mix, the way she started to progress as a hitter as well. But that can only add to the valuability of a player like, the value of a player like Klitsky when they can start to hit the ball like that as well. Outside for a ball two and two. Two on, one out. Counts two and two to Riley Buck, who singled and scored her last time up. Smith delivers, lifted, foul out of play, still two and two. It's a strong little battle going on here. Smith really needing that second out for her Memphis Tigers and Buck really wanting to do what she can to get a hit to the outfield. I haven't seen a slow swing from her at this at bat yet. She is going all at it. She really wants to send one out into the green and give her Shockers a chance to score a few more here in the fifth. So Smith will try it again with the count two and two. Another one fouled out of play. This has turned into a nice at bat, Jamie, for Riley Buck, fouling off two strike pitches and staying alive. Smith steps behind the rubber and takes a deep breath, and she's ready to rear back and fire another 2 2 pitch. And this one's gonna go into foul territory as well, but playable for the third baseman, Parker, who reaches back and makes a nice catch. That one continued to drift over toward the fence, and that's a big second out recorded here in the inning. Yeah, that's a great job from Parker at third base. Here at Wichita State, you got a little lip over there in the side near the third base dugout, and she, you could tell, was kind of getting nervous, like, how close am I? And she said, you know what? At the end of the day, I need to make this catch, so it's either me or the fence, and I'm gonna win this one, and, and she did exactly that because it was um, just far enough that she was able to make the grab without running into one. And now Bailey Lang, who had a ringing double to left field her last time up, and boy, could the Shockers use something like that here. Way outside for a ball, then a throw back to second base, and Derek go back in. That was Lang's sixth double of the season back in the fifth inning, or the fourth inning, excuse me, and that tied her for most doubles on the team. Lori Derrico also with six two-baggers on the season. Sliced foul, one and one. Bailey also scored in the fourth inning after her double. As Asia Weber, brought, excuse me, Madison Perrigan brought her home on a sacrifice fly. Here's the 1-1 one, one. in tight, and the count's now 2-1. and one. They will appeal to no avail, so it's confirmed 2-1. and one. Molly Smith went the distance on Friday night, gave up two runs and four hits. Today, the Shockers have had a little bit more success, four runs and seven hits, but Wichita State still trailing in the run column by three. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two. 
Well, that's the downside, Jamie, not that this game is over by any stretch, but if you told Christy Bredbender before the game that in the fifth inning, the Shockers would have four runs and seven hits, she'd probably feel pretty good with Bailey Lang out there in the circle today. Today just wasn't her day, though, in the circle. Again, though, still time for Wichita State. Bouncer just foul outside the bag at first. So we'll try it again. Shocker hitters, Jamie Buck and now Lang, both showing a lot of toughness in there at bats to fight off these two strike pitches. That's really what you want to see too. You know, you don't want to have a, a quick at bat, you know, get yourself out, have some nice quality swings, give yourself a chance to see a few more pitches from Smith, who's definitely been changing it up. We've seen a lot of different pitches from her so far and she's kept shocker hitters guessing a little bit, but they've done a great job swinging at good pitches and getting rid of the ones that maybe weren't their favorites and doing some big things with the ones that were in their wheelhouse, the pitches that they were looking to get. So here's Lang trying to kind of keep things rolling for her Wichita State team, as you said, struggled on the pitcher's mound earlier today, but definitely able to make a difference at the plate. Now, can you capitalize with a base hit? Here's another 2-2, two -two. swing and a miss. That one was ball three, but she went after it and comes up empty, and the side retired. The Shockers threaten in the fifth, but they leave two. We go to the sixth, 7-4, Tigers with the lead. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Well, Bailey Klitsky came on in the last inning, did the job. Now we'll see if Klitsky can hold Memphis where they are at a 7-4 lead. It'll be the top of the, well, excuse me, Aaron Parker, the nine batter to start it, then to the top of the order with Kyler Tross, Claire Quad, and Bailey Smith. So 9-1-2 for Memphis as the Tigers get their look at Klitsky out in the circle as Wichita State tries to keep it at a three-run deficit. To still water on Tuesday night for the Shockers. We will not bring you video of that, obviously, but we will have that at GoShockers.com, the audio stream only. Jamie, you're going to join me for that one, aren't you? I am. I'd be happy to. Fabulous. I have a blast hanging out with you yeah. and watching some good softball. That's right. It'll be our first go-around of softball without video. Always fun to go down to Stillwater, too. You know you're going to get a great game and see a great opponent. Absolutely. And they have an awesome facility, too. Sure do. I always like the trip down to Stillwater. Aaron Parker showed bunt but takes, and it's one ball and no strikes to her. Parker is 0 for 1. She walked in the second inning, grounded out to short in the fourth. Good pitch by Klitsky there, and it's now one and one. Well, if Bailey Klitsky continues to pitch this way the rest of not only this season, but her career, which still is very early, she's just a sophomore. This weekend could kind of be the turning point for her. Bunted at the plate, and the batter has been called out even before the throw to first base. She may have been out of the batter's box for that one. There's one away. We saw that happen a few times on Friday, which or the Memphis Tigers out of the box with their slap hitters. So you gotta be in the box when you make contact with the ball. That's gotta be a tough kind of call for the umpire, but when you can see it, you know, he stood up right away, made the call. 
and he knew that Parker was in fact out of the box when she made contact. So to the top of the order now with Kyler Trostclair Clatt, who's had another big day for Memphis. She's two for two, but reached base all three times as she was walked in the first inning. She started the day at 447 and her average has gone up since then. RBIs, both times she got base hits. This time lifts one to left field and she will finally be retired and it's two up, two down here in the top of the sixth inning for Memphis. That's a huge out. Trust Claire Klatt's just been hot this, this whole entire series against Wichita State and that's a big, big deal out to get the second out of the inning for Klitsky, knowing that she really wants to get her offense back in, keep the swinging going, get some more looks at Molly Smith from Memphis and see if they can uh, crew a few more runs here. Bailey Smith now in, takes the first pitch down and away. Shockers will have the bottom three in their order. Perrigan Weber and Bingham do up in the bottom of the sixth inning. Still have six outs to work with, does Wichita State down by three. So they're hanging around here now. Can the Shockers get some late inning magic again that we've seen this team do so many times in recent years, including this season. There's a strike, two and one. We've talked a lot about Molly Smith's changeup for Memphis, but you gotta really give your, or tip your cat to uh, to Klitsky too, who has a fantastic changeup, as we just saw it there. She has great command, does an awesome job of really pulling the trigger on a pitch like that. Scooped up by Mackenzie Wright, an easy one, two, three for Bailey Klitsky again. She does that in back-to-back -back innings. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Shocker's still down three. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Shocker fans hoping for some late inning magic. Seven to four, Wichita State trailing Memphis. Madison Perrigan will lead things off for the Shockers. Well, those fans bundled up a little, nothing like what we saw a couple of Tuesdays ago when Arkansas was here. Remember that game, Jamie, it was like 50 degrees and we had 30 mile an hour winds? That wasn't fun. No, it wasn't. And that was actually a scheduled doubleheader in the second game ended up being canceled because of the weather. Both teams agreeing that it just was a little too cold and planned to be even colder as the game two progressed. So the head coach is making the decision to not play and uh, probably even for good reason. Perrigan steps in against Molly Smith, takes a strike. Yeah, it's one of the rare times where a game is canceled and there's no precipitation, no rain, no snow, just a lot of cold and a lot of wind. No balls in a strike to Perrigan. Yeah, I said when, when the temperature and the wind only have a difference of 20, 30 mile an hour wind, 50 degrees, it's not good. Or you could have zero mile an hour wind, but that means it's 20 degrees, that's still not good. Yeah, not a good ratio yeah. for an outdoor sport. No. 
Winds today only around 15 miles an hour at the start. Temperature was in the high to uh, low to mid 40s. Sun has crept out though for most of the day and it's gotten a little bit warmer. There you can see the flag blowing. S slight breeze out of the south. Good job by our crew today. Picking up a lot of the shots. Two balls and a strike to Perrigan. Swings and fouls this one back to the screen, two and two. Asia Weber waits on deck. Bottom three again in the order for Wichita State. We talked about Madison Perrigan her last time up needing to get going. She flew out to center, Jamie, but that was a sacrifice fly. So maybe even good contact there could be the start of turning things around. Doesn't always have to be a base hit if it's just good contact and she drew it there. Yeah, it's just like a sacrifice bunt or a squeeze bunt. I mean, whatever you gotta do to produce some runs, that's what this game's all about. Although you'd love it to be like we saw on Friday night with one swing of the bat over the fence, produce a run. Doesn't always have to come that way. Full count here. Lifts this one to left field. Bailey Smith in and makes the catch one away. So Asia Weber will step in now. Speaking of getting a good piece of it, Asia did her last time up with a double. RBI double for Weber to left field and did a good job of going the other way with that double. Speaking of Oklahoma State, where Wichita State will be heading next, this is actually uh, Asia is a transfer student from Oklahoma State, came to Wichita State her sophomore year. You know that'll be a big night for her. 220 with the average starting the day. The run batted in she had in the fourth inning was her 10th of the season. Another one the other way, well struck and Smith is back. She's not gonna get there. And Asia is motoring to second. She'll get there with her second double of the day. And the Shockers with a runner in scoring position as Asia Weber has six doubles on the season now and a third of them have come today. When you talk about making an adjustment as a hitter, Asia Weber has done exactly that. She was a, sh a victim of a strikeout looking on the outside corner, her first at bat, and then picks up two doubles in her last two at bats on that same outside pitch, taking it all the way to the wall in left field. Awesome job adjusting as a hitter at the plate. Now Caitlin Bingham is in. And she takes one in tight for a ball, one and oh. Good to see Weber getting some production now, Jamie. Two doubles today. You want that bottom of the lineup to be reliable to get on base. And Asia's done that twice today with doubles out of the eighth spot. A strike delivered to Bingham, and it's now one and one. Caitlin Walk back in the third inning, later scored that inning. She popped out to second in the fourth. Takes high and away. Caitlin, one of three pitchers used by Wichita State today. Bailey Lane got the start. Bailey Klitsky in there now. And in between the two Baileys, it was Caitlin Bingham that had a stint in the circle as well. Two balls and a strike, the count to Caitlin with a runner at second base and one away. Shockers down by three. Down and in, three and one. Bingham also a very athletic player for Wichita State. Doing a little bit of both offensive and defensive um, standings as far as being a pitcher and a hitter at the plate. Someone who's absolutely a producer and someone as a freshman who has a very bright future here. Things could get very interesting if Caitlin gets aboard. You'd have the tying run, Mackenzie Wright up next. She will, there's a five pitch walk down to first base goes Bingham. You're dead. So Mackenzie Wright steps up to the plate now representing the potential game tying run. And as we said earlier, the Shockers don't necessarily need 
to think home run, just keep the line moving. But now you're back at that top of the order for Wichita State. Shockers with five outs left, but only down three, and they've got the top of their order up now, and it looks like Christy Breadbender's gonna get a courtesy runner on over at first base. Indeed, that's gonna be the case. Morgan Palmer will run over at first. So Palmer in to run for Wichita State, being him back to the dugout, and now Mackenzie Wright's had a couple of pretty good at bats today. She's flown out to center twice and had that line drive double back in the first inning. Shockers have out hit Memphis now by three, eight to five. If you're thinking of McKenzie in the home run, she is yet to homer this season. But again, Shockers would be very content if she just gets a base hit here. Takes on the inside edge for a strike, nothing at one. And as we've talked about, not a lot of RBI opportunities for McKenzie this season, but she certainly has one here. Just one run batted in for McKenzie this season. But runners at first and second here with one away. Hot shot, that's a fair ball inside the bag at third. That might well be an RBI. It will be, Asia Weber scores on an RBI double for Wright, her second of the day, and the Shockers are down by two. Fifth double of the season for McKenzie. Weber lowers around from second after her double, and it's a seven to five game. Second time that we've seen McKenzie Wright go down the line today. She's getting a lot of inside pitches, making the adjustments against Molly Smith for Memphis, sending this one all the way to the wall and giving her team a chance. Here, now making the lead, seven, or the um, lead for Memphis only by two. And Christy Breadbenner is going to come up and talk with Bailey Nickerson. And it looks like Memphis might be going with a pitching change right here. They have. So the Tigers are going to take Molly Smith out of the game. And they're going to get some relief in there as the Shockers now have the tying run out at second base. Mariah Nichols, who we saw pitch yesterday, will come in now in relief. So it's Nichols that comes on. The Shockers familiar with her as she was the starting pitcher in yesterday's game, but only lasted two and two thirds innings and gave up five earned runs. So a very interesting decision right here by Memphis to take their ace pitcher out of the game, albeit with the tying run now at second base, but still go with somebody who only lasted two and two thirds yesterday that the Shockers had a pretty good feel for. Yeah, Nichols had three walks, three strikeouts, but those five hits definitely stand out. You can see her numbers there for the season so far. Definitely someone that this Memphis team will lean on right behind Molly Smith as kind of their second string pitcher, but someone who struggled against Wichita State yesterday. So we'll see if she can pick up the pieces, make the adjustments against this Wichita State offense. Yeah, she's a great pitcher. Has some very good numbers. 211, the earned run average, 2.11, 8 and 4, the record. Opponents hitting just 218 above her. But the way the Shockers got to her yesterday and got to her early, this is an interesting decision by Memphis to take their ace out of the game right here. Now, in Memphis's defense, Bailey Nickerson does have two home runs in this series, both off of Molly Smith. Maybe that went into the thinking as well, but still interesting nonetheless as Nickerson steps in, representing the go-ahead run for Wichita State, and the first pitch very high, one ball and no strikes. Great job by Hadley for Memphis. That absolutely saved a run as that was way out of the zone. She popped up nicely to be able to make that catch. Bailey is two for three today. She also has a first inning single to go with her third inning home run. Oh, she was taking all the way and that one came in off the knob of the bat and it's a foul ball. One ball and one strike. 
How about a long ball right here and we can take it to the top of the seventh with a lead. Wouldn't that be nice? See if Klitsky could come on then and close the door. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Out of play on the right side. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, if there's a part of the lineup that Wichita State wants up right now, it's Nickerson. And, you know, seeing Derrico right behind her, these are two hot hitters for Wichita State, two runners in scoring position with less than two outs. This is an opportunity that this offense needs to capitalize on before heading into the seventh. One and two. And the pitch is down and in. And that'll even things up at two and two. As Jamie alluded to, Lori Derrico is on deck. Faint, very dangerous hitter in her own right. Quiet today, perhaps she's due. Morgan Palmer, the courtesy runner at third. Mackenzie Wright is out at second. The pitch, low again, ball three. And the count's now full at three and two. Wichita State was down by as many as five in this game. Seven to two, but they have since responded with three unanswered runs, and they've pulled within two, and Mariah Nichols is the pitcher in the circle, trying to quiet the Shockers here. Ground ball to second, and they're gonna have a play at the plate, the throw on the slide, and safe at the plate is Palmer. And down to second base now goes Nickerson on a very risky play by Brooke Lee, the second baseman, who had an easy out to first, would have given up the run, and instead opted to throw home, and Natalie Poole does not like that call. Yeah, Natalie Poole is definitely not happy with this. We can see in the replay here, coming in, looks like the tag was missed. Morgan Palmer going around the bat in order to tag it with her hand. That's an awesome athletic slide from Morgan Palmer. Definitely one of the quickest runners on this offensive team for Wichita State, and coming in the clutch, and definitely not what Memphis wanted to see. And Jamie, how about that decision by Brooke Lee to throw home when she had the easy out at first base for out number two? Yeah, you give up the run, but is the risk worth the reward when now you've got a one-run game and one out when you could have had a one-run game and two away? Now that's a tough decision, and I think you know offensively you're almost always going to see the girl on third base, your your runner on third base, take off when the ball goes to the opposite field. So I think that ball was actually just not hard hit enough for that to be a bang bang play. I think it was a little too much of a slow roller. Probably a better idea to go to first and get the sure out. Because now a fly ball to the outfield can tie the game. Had she gone to first, a fly ball to the outfield ends the inning. Lori Derrico stepping in, and the pitch to Lori is going to hit a ground ball out to short. Diving stop there by Tross Claire Clapp. The throw to first, not in time. We've got a tie game. The 10th hit of the day for Wichita State, and they've tied it at seven. Coming all the way back from down five. Great stop by Tross Claire Clapp only to avoid a second run from scoring. The only option she had to go to first base, that throw not in time. Great hustle play from Tross Claire Clatt. That's tough. I mean, honestly, that ball goes out into the outfield most of the time, and she made that diving stop and even a great throw from her knees, but just not, not in enough time to get Derrico down at first. And now Wichita State right back in it. 7-7 seven, seven, tie ball game. Paige Llewellyn is back into the game for Wichita State as the designated player. So Llewellyn steps in and Paige got a base hit her last time up, but how about the resiliency of this Shocker team? We've touched on it already. They were down seven to two with a lot of time left and sure enough, here we are and they've come back and they didn't even need to get to the seventh inning to get tied. As we start all over now, Llewellyn steps in. And the two batters that Mariah Nichols has faced ground into a fielder's choice and a hard hit infield single once Molly Smith left the game. Llewellyn takes a strike and now it doesn't even take a base hit to tie the score or to give the Shockers the lead. Tied at seven with a runner at third base in Bailey Nickerson. So a sack fly can now give the Shockers the lead. 
One and one to Llewellyn on the pitch. In there for a strike, that was a good pitch. Shockers have put some crooked numbers up. Two in the third, two in the fourth, three here in the sixth, and they may not be done with only one out. Runners at the corners. Down low, good stop behind the plate by Hadley, and then alertly finds the softball, and staying at third base is Bailey Nickerson. Llewellyn took an at-bat off as Klitsy came into her position in the lineup a little bit earlier today, and so now she's getting to come back refreshed, seeing a, a new view with Mariah Nichols on the mound. Two balls, two strikes to Llewellyn. And Paige sends one on the ground. That is just barely fair. The throw to first, nicely dug out by Threat with the stretch. And Nickerson had to stay at third base. So now two away. That's a very big out because now it takes away the possibility of a sacrifice fly. And here it is again. Nice job by Threat right there, stretching it out. Yeah, that's a tough play as a first baseman. <laughs> Making the out when she needed to, especially against a, a good hitter in Llewellyn. Nice pitch from Nichols, and then a nice pickup by Threat over at th first base. Now can Riley Buck give the Shockers the lead with runners at second and third. Derrico went down to second on that ground out. The pitch to Riley, bouncing ball over to third, fielded by Parker, the throw to first, and out at first base is gonna be Buck. On a close play, the Shockers leave two in scoring position, but hey, they scored three. We go to the seventh in a brand new ball game. Memphis seven, Wichita State seven on WSU TV. Well, a lot of interesting things have happened. First of all, Wichita State tied the score at seven in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the Shockers have gone back to Bailey Lang, center circle for Wichita State. It was a struggle for her early, Jamie. And perhaps after some time to think about it, now maybe Bailey has regrouped and is ready to go and give a new life with the 7-7 game. But laying back in the circle for Wichita State. Yeah, I had a feeling that might be something that Wichita State would maybe think about doing because Lang, you know, wasn't looking super great right off the top of this game, but she's someone that bounces back quickly. She is your ace. She's someone who might just needed a little bit of a refresh. She's had that opportunity, had a few at bats since then, has been playing the outfield. Now she's back, still in the game. Someone who is definitely a person that Wichita State can lean on in a situation where you've got a tied ball game. And what's funny is not only is Lang back in there, but with that, the Shockers have gone back to their original lineup that started the game. So we've seen a lot of shuffling between the first inning and now, but it's back to the way things started for Wichita State in their lineup. The first batter that Lang will face is Addison Maxwell, and Bailey delivers a strike. Nothing at one. Lang did not make it out of the second inning, Jamie. As Memphis scored three times. A ball here, and it's one and one. It was a pretty good start for Bailey. She walked the leadoff batter in the game, Kyler Trost, Claire Clatt, but then retired the side in order in the first. But the second, Bailey just did not look by herself and did not make it through that inning. And this is here for a ball. Lane gave up a leadoff single to Delaney Smith in the second inning. And then retired the next two batters on a strikeout and a ground up. But then there was a walk, catcher's interference, 
a single, another couple of walks. And it was a struggle for the Shockers in that top of the second. Two balls and a strike, the count to Maxwell. Maxwell's been quiet today. She had one of those second inning walks, but 0 for 2 outside of that. One hopper to right at third, throws to first in time, one away. Good start for Bailey there. Yeah, that's a big out. Although Maxwell's been quiet today, she's in that three spot for a reason. She's a consistent good hitter, puts this ball straight into the ground. Mackenzie Wright able to make the nice throw over to first base for the first out of the inning. Now Ashley Threat, who had that big fourth inning home run. And the first pitch to her is a ball. I want to go back to the second inning, Jamie. It was mentioned earlier, let's not forget, Caitlin Bingham came on in relief. And while Memphis did score three times that inning, they left the bases loaded. And here we are in the seventh inning in a 7-7 tie. Yeah, Memphis has left four on base so far. One in the first, three in the second. After that, either being retired in a row or in the fourth inning, cleaning up the bases, not leaving anyone out there as they had a huge inning in the fourth, scoring four. Another one the other way, but Palmer is there and Morgan chases it down, two up, two down, here in the top of the seventh inning. So that should not be forgotten through all the crazy things in this ball game that Memphis left them loaded and a good job by Caitlin Bingham to do that in relief for Wichita State. And now up to the plate steps Delaney Smith. Speaking of Bailey Lang, Jamie, she is due to lead off the bottom of the seventh inning. Lang, Madison Perrigan, and Asia Weber, six, seven, and eight for the Shockers in the bottom of the seventh, which is coming up soon because of a one, two, three for Bailey. Mackenzie Ride, another bouncer to throw to first. The Shockers need one to win. We go to the bottom of the seventh. University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. To the bottom of the seventh, the Shockers need one. Seven, seven is our score, and Mariah Nichols is out there to start. The bottom of the seventh inning for Wichita State. The Shockers have Lang, Madison Perrigan, and Asia Weber. Six, seven, and eight, and all they need is a run for what would be a dramatic come from behind victory for Wichita State on the first Sunday of conference play as the first pitch to Lang is in there for his strike, nothing in one. Bailey is one for three today with another double that happened in the fourth inning. It was her sixth of the season that ties for a team high. Bouncer over to second and a chance for Lee. Makes it look easy on two hops, one away. So now Madison Perrigan will give it a shot. It's the fifth time the ball's been hit over to Lee at second base. She's been active and she's done a really great job. I think she just kind of had a little bit of a, a miscue last inning when she threw the ball home instead of the first to get the out. But you know what? So far, out of her attempts with the ball coming her way, she's done an awesome job. She's made the decisions she felt she needed to as a senior out there on the field, and so far kept her Memphis Tigers to a good spot defensively. One ball and no strikes, the count to Perrigan, and the pitch to Madison. 
fouled off the screen, one and one. This could be a pretty big at bat, Jamie, because the batter on deck is Asia Weber, who all of a sudden has caught fire with back-to-back -back doubles in her last two at bats. So if Perrigan is able to get aboard and Madison does that again, it could be curtains here at the Wilk. One and one in the pitch, and there for his strike. Madison does have a sacrifice fly to her credit, a fly ball RBI in the fourth inning for her 17th run batted into the season. Down and in for a ball that counts even two and two. One of these two teams is going to be two and one in conference play. Here's the 2-2, down and in. And Jamie, you, you can't underestimate the value even this early in conference play of getting a win here because I think a lot of people are expecting a pretty good log jam up toward the top of the conference standings and with head-to-head -head tiebreakers and things like that coming into play possibly, this could end up being a very big game for one of these two teams. Down goes Perrigan swinging for the second out of the inning. Yeah, Friday night we saw a lot of teams in the American just losing by one run. So I think you're going to see some really close, tight games, which is fun. You know, softball is meant to be that. You know, you've got pitchers, duels, you've got times when your hitters just come out and they can't miss a ball. And that's what Utah State yesterday with the 11 to 1 victory. Um, but we're going to see some fun games this year, I think. And Asia Weber is going to reach first base, the third appearance at the plate in a row she's going to reach. This might be on an error as she bounced one back up the middle, but Tross Claire Platt could not field it cleanly. And here it is again. She came across the bag at second, and that one was in and out of the glove, and that could be a very big error right there on Kyler Tross Claire Clack because now that puts the potential game winning run at first base and here's Morgan Palmer. First pitch to Palmer taken for a strike. Morgan Palmer was, this is interesting, the number nine hitter in the lineup at the start of the game for Wichita State but is not having it back today because Caitlin Bingham came in to pitch in the second inning and took over that spot in the batting lineup. So even though Morgan was a starting left fielder at the number nine spot, this is her first at bat today, and she's gonna bounce one over towards second and beat out the throw. And that was a big infield hit because now it goes back to the top of the order with the red hot Mackenzie Wright stepping up who could end the game with one swing of the bat. Yeah, you can see here in the replay, Morgan Palmer, that's a slapper's game right there. Hit that ball straight into the ground hard as you can and make it really tough for Lee to make the play at second base. It's always tough to see the ball go between your pitcher and your first baseman and second baseman to decide who should get that. And with Morgan Palmer's speed, she had just enough to leg it out. Palmer was hitting just a buck 82 coming into the game, but a hit there. Now Mackenzie Wright takes the first pitch down and in. And Mackenzie has swung the bat well today. Contact every time. A pair of doubles sandwiched in between those. A pair of flyouts to center field. She's two for four. Her, RB, her, her double in the sixth inning produced a run batted in as well. The 1-0. -oh. Outside, and the count is now 2-0. And another red hot hitter is on deck. So if you work around Mackenzie Wright, you're gonna have to deal with Bailey Nickerson. Not easy for Mariah Nichols right here by any stretch. There's a look at Nickerson on deck. Two balls and no strikes. Big swing and a miss for right there, and it's now two and one. I think Wright was looking to end the game with that swing. She came out of her shoes. That was a very, very strong swing. And she hasn't been cheated at all today. She's had a lot of, t of hard hits, some of which have either produced and gotten her on base or been fly ball outs to center field. She's taken this ball pretty long, pretty uh, far out there and just looking for an opportunity to end this game for her team. The two one downstairs and it's now three and one. Asia Weber, the runner at second base. Morgan Palmer at first, but if Weber comes around to score, it's a ball game. 
Wichita State, 11 hits today in seven runs. Here's the 3-1 to McKenzie, sliced right side. This one is gonna tail and head out of play down toward the Shocker bullpen. And the count is full three and two. Shockers trying to walk it off. And head to Stillwater on Tuesday with a very good taste in their mouths. They can do that right here. Kenzie adjusts the batting gloves and about ready to get back in. Somebody who's been in plenty of pressure situations for Wichita State throughout her career is in one here. Full count, here's the pitch. Strike three called and down she goes and Wright can't believe it. She was four steps down to first base. She thought that was ball four and instead we're going to extra innings. The Shockers leave two. We'll go to the eighth in a 7-7 game. Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Here it is, the full count pitch to McKenzie Wright. Wright didn't like the call and looked pretty good from right there, Jamie, as McKenzie was rung up. And as you and I were talking about off the year, sometimes when you've got two strikes and they're that close, even if you don't think it's a strike, if it's anywhere close, you probably better serve to swipe at it anyway. Yeah, if you're right in that position, you don't want to swing at the wrong pitch, but you also don't want to let one go by that's looking too good, maybe foul it off if you don't like it. It's a tough position to be in. She's done a great job today getting that inside pitch out to the outfield, so definitely a disappointing ending to the seventh inning for Wichita State. Looking to make a difference here in extras. So Brooke Lee starts it off for Memphis and she slices one into the gap in right center field. That's gonna get down for a base hit and it'll be an extra base hit for Lee, a head first dive into second. And Memphis now has their leadoff batter aboard here in the top of the eighth inning. That is the first hit of the day for Brooke Lee who came into the day as a 300 hitter. She was 0 for three prior to that, Jamie, but picked a perfect spot for that one. It's only a matter of time when you're a hot hitter, you're gonna figure something out, make the right adjustment that you need to and win better to do it than in extra innings for your team. Fifth double of this season for Brooke Lee and now Memphis is gonna make a substitution right here, probably for Lee out at second base because Reagan Hadley's already out to hit. So we will likely see a courtesy runner for the Tigers right here. That's exactly what we've got. And it looks like that's Delaney Smith who's gonna go out to run. So Smith will be the courtesy runner at second base. Reagan Hadley is another one who's been quiet today. She is also like Lee, 0 for 3, but Lee just produced a double to right center field. Up high to Hadley for a ball, 1-0. The double for Brooke Lee, the sixth hit of the game for Memphis. Lane trying to work the outside edge right there and just missed. 2 and 0. Lane away again, 3 and 0. Wichita State will have Bailey Nickerson, Lori Derrico, and Paige Llewellyn up in the 
bottom of the eighth inning, two, three, and four. There's one, a strike. Badly needed by Lang, and it's three and one. That's a good part of the order for Wichita State to have leading off an inning. The question in, what will the score be? Another one that's a strike. Lang worked that one just a bit to the further inside from the previous time she was working the outer edge. Got the call there, counts four. Now the payoff pitch. Fouled out of play, three and two. Yeah, when you're laying and you're, you're facing six, seven, eight, nine, you wanna make sure that you're keeping the ball low, keeping those outfield hits to a minimum as we just saw off the bat of Lee. Another one that comes inside and I think they say that that hitter and she's gonna go down to first base. And Ron Stefankiewicz didn't like that call. I don't know if he said she was swinging. Or if maybe it was foul, but she's shaking it off like it got her in on the elbow and Hadley is down at first base. Yeah, in real speed, I can see how that probably looked like she, Hadley got in the way of the ball a little bit, didn't make the attempt to get out of the way. But on the replay, it looks like that definitely came high and tight, enough that she probably didn't have the chance to move too quickly out of the way of that pitch. Well, now things getting a little dicey for Wichita State here. Memphis with two on and nobody out here in the top of the eighth inning, as Reagan Hadley still shaking it off over at first base, as Kendall Lee steps in now. Lee barely gets a piece of one and fouls it back toward the backstop. Nothing in one to her. I think Andy Lott, the assistant coach for Memphis, was wanting to see if there was catcher's interference again. It was this batter Lee where it happened before. Strike delivered. That was a very costly catcher's interference, Jamie, way back in the second inning. That's the second inning I talked about earlier where Memphis led him loaded, but their rally started when Kendall Lee with two outs and a runner at first reached on catcher's interference. Fouls one back to the screen. We also talked about Kendall Lee picking up her second walk of the season. And that was in her second at bat in the fourth. So definitely someone who's gotten on base and a couple of free passes looking to continue this in inning offensively for her Memphis Tigers. Yeah, two very costly at bats for Wichita State. Lee, the lowest batting average amongst starters at 276, but she reached on catcher's interference and scored in the second, then given a free pass on a walk in the fourth and scored. Now she delivers a base hit, and it gets away from Nickerson in center, and that's gonna score two. And heading down to third base and safe there is gonna be Lee, and Memphis has taken a 9-7 lead. And some of the Tigers came out of the dugout right there. The ball trickled over toward the dugout, but the damage has already been done as the Tigers lead by two. Yeah, you see this ball just off into the outfield and an unfortunate miscue by Bailey Nickerson just under her glove, chasing after it all the way out into the outfield, scoring a few runs for Memphis. That's tough. As an outfielder, it's the last thing you want is for the ball to get by you. And that one just skids right underneath her glove out into the outfield, giving Memphis the go-to with the opportunity of two runs coming in. And that might well be a two-base error on Bailey Nickerson in center field. What looked like it was going to be a routine hard-hit single ends up with Lee at third base. So Wichita State is now down by the score of 9-7. to seven and a golden opportunity for Memphis to get a third run this inning because they've got Kendall Lee over at third base now with nobody out. And Memphis is gonna get a pinch hitter into the game. And that's gonna be Tyler Johnson. So Tyler Johnson, the pinch hitter with a runner at third and the pitch 
Here is a ball to even the count at one ball and one strike. We saw Johnson back on Friday. She had one at bat. She was 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter for Parker. Just 6 of 37 on the season. Takes a strike. I think the Tigers would be content if she can just get one to the outfield. Base hit or not and get another run across. Again, Wichita State, don't go anywhere. Has their two, three, and four hitters up in the bottom of the eighth inning as Johnson fouls one back to the screen. One ball and two strikes. Bailey Nickerson's error in center field, the second error of the day committed by Wichita State. And it was a costly one as runners advanced, including Kendall Lee all the way to third base. Strike three called is Johnson is rung up on the strikeout looking for the first out of the inning. It's a huge out from Lang. You gotta come back. You know, you gotta get the outs. This is a big opportunity for Johnson to come in and she takes that pitch. Great job from Lang to get the first out of the inning. Now a very tough out and Tyler Trostler Quatt stepping in. She did fly out to left her last time up, but prior to that had been on base all three plate appearances. She is two for three on the day. She's also walked here, a ground ball to short. Derrico's only option to throw to first, and another run comes home, and Memphis now leads by three, 10-7. So Lee scores from third, the third run of the inning for the Tigers. And they've now hit double digits here at a 10-7 lead. Tross Claire Clatt continuing to do what she knows how to do, and that's get those runners that are in scoring position in and crossing the plate. Definitely a help for Memphis. First pitch is strike here to Bailey Smith, and it's nothing in one. So Bailey Lang just not the same Bailey Lang that we've seen this season today as she had trouble in the second inning, left the game, trouble here in the eighth inning as well. Now Memphis is a very good hitting team, but troubles for Bailey Lang. Pitch away here, one and two. tight for a ball. Well, you feel for Bailey too because you know she had to really be anxious. She was giving a second, she given a second chance here in the game to come back out in the eighth inning, try and shut the door, the seventh inning for that matter as well, but no dice here in the eighth as Memphis has scored three, that one down and away and it counts four. Yeah, the innings that Wichita State's defense has been good, they've been really good. The first, the third, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh, all one, two, three outs. But given up a, a few really big scoring innings so far to Memphis, and that's made all the difference today. And a walk issued to Bailey Smith. She'll head down to first. You said you weren't necessarily surprised with Bailey Lane coming back into the game here in the eighth, but... How about the job that Bailey Klitsky did? She was really rolling when she was taken out of the game. Now Maxwell takes a strike, nothing in one. Playing ready and delivers. That one fouled back, but a lot of thinking goes into these kinds of decisions. And I know Christy Breadbenner had a very good reason for doing it. But Memphis right now sitting with a three-run lead, 10 to 7. Lifted, shallow center. Derrick back. Lori makes the catch. Side retired. But Memphis plates three in the inning. That's what the Shockers will need to die as we go to the bottom of the eighth.
Wichita State University is preparing today's students to become tomorrow's leaders. The Shock the World campaign is raising $25 million in private funds for a new home for the W. Frank Barton School on the Innovation Campus. Invest today in tomorrow's business leaders by calling 316-978-4076 or visit www.wichita.edu slash shock the world. Well, the Shockers have the right part of the lineup up to do some damage here in the bottom of the eighth, but they need to, or Wichita State will lose two out of three to Memphis. Mariah Nichols is out there now. She would be the winning pitcher in this game if she can hold on, but Wichita State has other ideas, and we'll see what Bailey Nickerson can do to get things started for Wichita State. Shockers down three, 10-7, bottom of the eighth inning. The first pitch to Bailey is down and in for a ball, 1-0. Game approaching the three-hour mark. We'll be there in about 10 minutes. We started a little bit late at around 11.15 Central Time. Game delayed for a little extra grounds crew maintenance after some morning rain. Now here we are nearly three hours later as Nickerson's going to bounce one over to third, fielded cleanly by Aaron Parker. And a throw to first in time, one away. So Lori Derrico will now get her crack at Mariah Nichols. Shockers down to their final two outs. Lori had an infield hitter last time up, takes his strike here, nothing in one. I mentioned earlier, Jamie, the Shockers would be probably feeling pretty good if you told Christy Breadbenner the amount of runs and hits they'd have midway through the game. Well, here we are now after seven, and they've scored seven times with 11 hits against Molly Smith. And again, you mentioned that to Christy Breadbenner before the game. She'd probably be feeling very, very good about her team's chances, but not today. Yeah, with 11 hits, you know, you had 11 hits yesterday with 11 runs. So that's the big difference is the runners being left on base today. You're upwards of nine now for Wichita State, not producing when it really needed to happen and, and really Memphis shutting it down when it did. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a matter of getting some runs produced, getting some things started because with 11 hits and seven runs, you really should be able to win a ball game and uh, Memphis just being able to do a little bit better in the category of getting those runs across. One ball and two strikes now to Derrico, and Laurie's going to send one over to second, and Brooke Lee is right there for a 4-3 put out. And Wichita State now down to their final out. Page was inserted back into the lineup in the sixth inning and grounded out to third. She batted in the first and third innings and went 0 for 2. Bailey Klitsky came into the four hole earlier in the game when she was pitching and actually had a single in the fifth, but Page in the four spot is 0 for 3 and has a strike here, nothing in one. Shockers just desperately need base runners now, down by three. Now they're down to their final strike. A home run would be nice, but now you want to string together several base hits in a row, but Wichita State down to their final strike now as Llewellyn has the count against her, nothing in two. Down and in, one and two. Riley Buck waits on deck. One ball, two strikes, here's the pitch, sliced foul. Memphis's next conference action will be next weekend as they will be at home to take on South Florida next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They'll have Alcorn State at home on Tuesday for their midweek game. Here's the one, two. 
Round ball over to third. Parker is there. Parker throws to first in time. That's the ball game. So we go an extra frame, but Memphis, who led most of the day, winds up the winner. The final score, 10 to 7. We'll be back with the final wrap right after this. Welcome back to Wilkins Stadium where we had a wild one today that actually had to go an extra frame before Memphis wins by the score of 10 to 7. Bailey Lang, the losing pitcher for Wichita State. Mariah Nichols gets the victory for Lang. She is now 9 and 8 on the season. Mariah Nichols with the victory now 9 and 4. As for the records, Memphis 2 and 1 in conference play. 23 and 8 overall. The Shockers 1 and 2 in the league. They are 17 and 12. Wichita State, Jamie overcame a seven to two deficit in this game to score five, two in the fourth and three in the sixth to pull even, but Bailey Lang, just not the same Bailey Lang we've seen all season long, but perhaps this red hot hitting Memphis offense had something to do with that. Yeah, these were two very evenly matched teams, both doing a great job on the mound, a great job at the plate, and it's just a matter of time before you start to see one of those teams busted open, and Memphis did a great job scoring runs today with only seven hits, turned it into 10 runs against Wichita State's 11 hits, the big difference there producing when it counted and really making the difference at the plate. Shockers to the road. Tuesday night, they'll be in Stillwater for Oklahoma State, then at UConn next weekend. We'll talk to you again when the Shockers are here to take on Kansas April the 4th. 10-7 Memphis. They take two out of three for Jamie and Steve. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks.